Lot of Live. It's Tuesday, you sons of bitches. What's going on? Oh, I'm not home. I'm sorry. I'm talking to you guys. It is Tuesday. It's Collider Live and joined today by Mr. Mark Ellis. Hello, Marcus. Hey, buddy. How are you? Woo! Yeah. Oh, yeah. The wild man's back. here. Josh McCuga is back. Sorry. I was just, I was cheering for Mark. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thanks oh, a lot. Yeah. Thank you, Josh. And I'm cheering for McCuga. That's a lie. That's a bold-faced lie. Then you I will do this. Yeah. In- introduce the next person here. Mark Yodi Riley is here. Hey. Uh, no, 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 no. I was going to cheer for Roxy. Because oh, right, right, right. oh. Ro- everybody, oh, yeah, I guess Riley yeah, didn't do it. Stryer is here. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm learning to burp. Oh. <laughs> to, to Tina, the, to Tina, Tina Smith? Who is that? Tiffany Smith? This Tiffany is, Smith. Uh, do it. What? Well known Tina burper. Smith is her sister. Yeah. She's, good, she's good at it? It's fantastic. She does. She burps. She has to burp before every show, or she can't do a show. Oh my god! Seriously? Yeah, she like passes out, and it's loud too. It's like a lot. Yeah, but uh, Roxy, she can't handle cow farts. I'll tell you this: regardless of how much you burp in this studio, it will not be as bad as the cardinal sin that no one should ever commit doing a podcast in a small room like this. About ten minutes before the show started. I'm in here like a professional. Oh, don't talk and to me And then about this. Daddy walks doing. in with a hot egg sandwich, yeah. takes a fat bite of it, yeah, and cheese. leaves the plate here, yeah. and then walks out with the egg sandwich. How good here. is it smell? You don't like eggs, though. surprised. I, I like egg whites, but I don't like so smelling them. So what's egg whites? Them. I like smelling them. I mean, well, smelling them is horrible. It's you that person. I like you said I like smelling It's early. So you, see, we did a Freudian lot of shoot slip. stuff today. No, shit. it's that person on the airplane that brings like Indian yes. food and sits right next to you. Let me Come ask on. you guys. Let me ask you. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> okay. You've known me for what? Six, seven years. Yeah, now? it's been a while. How awful of a person I am when I don't eat. Uh, yeah, it's terrible. What's worse? Uh, I'll take the. I'll take the eating. You'll you'll take me. You'd rather me eat with inside of the studio, yes. right? Yeah. So then, stop fucking. I would do it out there. Why are the, the, the well, only that, two options? Two minutes. Because there's only two minutes left. But, but, but Come you on, left. two minutes. I was cooking eggs. <laughs> no, no, no. I wasn't Don't cooking. Spin this around. What do you mean? You walked in here. <laughs> yes. With a hot egg sandwich. It was delicious. Took mm. a bite. Right. And then left for because five Because I had minutes. to find my uh, whatever the hell this is thing. It's this a, cocktail glass. It's thing. a margarita glass from Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. I don't know what it is, but Alex is scurrying around the place looking for for a glass, and he brings me this contraption. Okay, be honest though is it a little bit of an ego thing with you in the glass like do you no. have to have like a, a more a more regal glass than anybody no, else no, no. in the I studio mean, i like the game of thrones glass not the, the the one i was the big mug for a while <laughs> no i mean i like the king's chalice no, no. i used to no, have the chalice i liked for a bit that was getting a little too obnoxious but the other one that i've been using just the game of thrones just like wine glass is fine yeah, it doesn't a, bother anybody okay. it just has game of thrones on it how I drink we... LaCroix and I know things. Yeah, Why do true. we just accept when people say that they're dicks when they're hungry? Can't you just not be? It, uh, no. no. It's, it, it, look, you tell, ask my wife that. It's like she calls it a hunger monster. Are you referring it's, to me as your wife? Because well, yeah, I've seen them, it. Both of them. It's it's nothing. It's literally like I turn into a different person, and I don't know how to. I, you I, can't I have to eat. help it. We legitimately mentioned in our vows. When we got married, Amanda said, "You will have to deal with me when I'm hangry, and I will yeah. have to deal with your road rage." Like that was a thing. That was, was it. A, that was a thing we met in the middle. On. Yeah, I, and she's angry. She gets angry. What are you gonna do? I just I always have snacks now, and I make sure. I, and that's why I made a vow. <laughs> you always have other people's snacks. Well, I, I will eat. I don't know. I will eat other people's snacks. But uh, like Roka's, Roka's snacks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's more of the Roka's Roka's snacks. Roka's, 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 you, know, you know who's got great snacks? Snyder. Snyder brings in great yeah, snacks. Yeah, always. I will wipe his snacks out, and I shouldn't be eating half the shit. I mean, I don't know how he's still alive. Man, uh, the stuff that he eats. But what like, kind of stuff? Are it's so just, delicious. It's just garbage, but it's good garbage. It's uh, I, what, you, you know, know that stuff. You know when you like go into a convenience store and there's like some hot new bag of something that is clearly bad for you. Snyder's like, I have six of those. Yeah, and and it's delicious. Delicious. It's I got just, caught just, by those, those. when yeah. when Lay's potato chips started doing like the crazy flavors. Like they had like sausage and biscuit flavor. Like that was gross. It, it's not that I was looking forward to it necessarily, but when I see a bag like that, I need to know what it tastes like. Right. I know what you mean. I have to do it. Yeah. And they usually don't taste all that different from any other potato chip you've ever had. But well, that's I how just they get need you. to know. That's how they get you. You yeah. know what suck? Pringles. Never got it. I like cheesy really? Pringles. Damn. I like cheesy Pringles. They taste you like said cardboard. a lot of stupid dong takes <laughs> in this show, but that is by far yeah. the worst. That's just not. That's just an opinion. You got. You got to. You got to get the, what a dong take it's, is. It, down. it might be you a twat take, but it's not a dong take. 
<laughs> they, I don't understand. Lay's are amazing. Pringles <laughs> taste like legit cardboard in somebody's ass. No, nah, oh, that is well, false. Here's the thing about Pringles, yeah. though. Pringles, Pringles I'm Dennis stay. That. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis has been living on Pringles for the last three years. <laughs> Pringles keep sick. their form through most of the can, though, which is impressive because Lay's potato chips. You open it and it smells fresh, and just that scent pops out at you. You get a couple full chips, and then it's just crumbs. Yeah. You're dealing with crumbs yeah, for yeah. the majority yeah, yeah, yeah. of the day. I agree. Lay's should take Pringles packaging. The way that they do it. I think they might have done that. You just that, don't actually. like the, You just well, don't like, you think that. it just it feels like cardboard, right? It tastes like cardboard. Yeah, I like the cheesy cardboard. Yeah, cheesy yeah. cardboard. I'm not going to say no to cheesy so, cardboard. So a couple years ago, oh, okay. <laughs> Tr- Trader Joe's came out with this holiday potato chip, and it was like a turkey stuffing potato chip. That's what it tasted like. It's incredible. Really? Now, here's what you do, and you, you probably won't like it because you don't like cheese. You don't eat cheese. You take a little bit of cranberry sauce from Trader Joe's, you take cream cheese, you mix it together, and you dip the stuffing uh, chip in it. Yeah. It's a turkey oh, dinner. Oh, it's, it's Thanksgiving it on a potato good. chip. Oh. It's fantastic. I would, I, yeah, that's I, not, that, that sounds horrific. Uh, no, only see, in America. Yeah. Why don't you eat cheese? Eat the yeah. farts? No, I don't like the way it tastes. Oh, okay. It's the worst. <laughs> So you're not I, even lactose intolerant, just no cheese? No, I eat ice cream. Here's, uh, here's uh. the thing. I tell people that I am because nobody will stop. They People will not <laughs> stop. Stop it, you idiots. I, I don't like pizza with the cheese on it. I don't like mac and cheese. I wow. don't like, just like, like sauce cream bread? cheese. Is I don't like in there still? any cheese. And people will no, not fucking off, right. stop. If you say I don't like cheese, pizza? Mac, what about mac and cheese? Right. How about just regular like cheese? Cheddar? You don't like, Do you like know. Munster? Like <laughs> Who is to say you're talking to? A Muppet? <laughs> Every person when you say you don't you like cheese. You won't eat that cheese. You just start like listening. French person that you're talking to. Yeah. Just Swiss? French Muppet. <laughs> Hello, I'm Gouda. <laughs> Today you must have the cheese. It's Put so it on the crackers. Today we'll learn how to eat string cheese. Wee! That's a common one people ask about. Yeah. Scream um, cheese? I, I, I saw the grossest thing I've ever seen to this day in, uh, in like, eighth grade. My buddy, my buddy Jack, who actually watches the show regularly, he's, he's one of my best friends in the world. This show or your show? Th- this show. Oh, nice. And he watches them all. And he- he literally, it was at lunch, and for whatever reason, we weren't sitting at the same table that day. And he was over there, and so this is maybe think like like twenty feet away, and he was just sitting there. And I just I caught the view, and he had a string cheese thing. And like mm-hmm. the way I eat string cheese is like it's called string cheese for a reason. You just feel the string apart, cheese. Yeah. He went so full blown. Jack, just Jack opens it, and I and I'm just like you know eat, eat my peanut butter sandwich. I look over right as he is going. Um, and just grabs, just takes half of the string cheese in takes one, it out. one bite. And I just remember thinking, who does that? It's like my seven-year-old. Yeah. Who is that for you, man? Yeah, yeah. It was, he was eating it like it was a Snickers bar. Yeah. It was so disgusting. Just the way, the, what, the cheese? Oh. I mean, no, I, it's, you, string cheese is meant to be eaten as yeah. string. <laughs> or put yeah, it, it on an English muffin. Eat, correct. There you go. You, you put it in dessert sauce. now, Ooh. ricotta cheese? No, the way you do it is... <laughs> ricotta cheese? Laid across like we, like a weaving. Yeah, the way you do it is you Pizza put it... Muffin. You put it... Uh, exactly. You put the, the tomato sauce on, you put some garlic mm. salt on it, or, it or, or splice some garlic onto it. I don't do ricotta. It, I don't mess with anything. No, we're not talking about no ricotta. We're talking about string, string cheese. Why don't you listen to the ricotta. fucking show? Okay. He was listening to me. Yeah. Oh. Wow. That was, first of all, <laughs> <laughs> maybe go back angry. and have another egg sandwich <laughs> with that kind of I would love to. Oh. I got this onion bread. <laughs> yeah. It was really good. Onion yeah. bread? I usually don't I get the onion rolls. Are you, are you, you are trying weeks. to offend right people now. that yeah. are in, in your in your area? What? Hey, Sadie, peck some onion bread. Give me onion some roll. eggs. I, Sadie, I went and bought that. My, I go to Ralph's now because it saves me a lot of money. I, I'm surprised with your <laughs> egg smellingness. Like, onions I get. Okay, yeah. we don't like oniony breath in the morning, but yeah. eggs don't really smell bad. Oh, yeah, yes, smell. they do. It depends. It, hard-boiled eggs do. Oh, not, not, yeah, yeah, hard-boiled eggs are brutal. Hard-boiled eggs. That's the smelling Just got a Just got a text from Jack. Oh, what did he say? Give me the cheese he said <laughs> he said thanks for calling me out you can eat string cheese any way you want <laughs> <laughs> no he's no, right he he's, no, I, he's I called right. string wait, cheese wait, wait, jackson let me, let me let me say this when you told that story i thought you were gonna see, hear something really disgusting yeah. i'm on jack's side here so the guy wants to eat the fucking cheese by, by taking a it, bite it, out of it who cares the way why are you he trying to impress it? jack He's my pal. How do you know? <laughs> Jack's of Florida Jack, State. That's yeah. exactly right. See, I could smell it. Do you know, know, do you know what, cheese. though? Yeah, I, I, I like to smell like cheese. I agree with Ellis, but I, I'd like to side with Jack for a hot second. He bit it angrily. It okay. was, it was 
Did, uh, he was upset at the cheese. Were the lips like Was he like moistened? Augustus Gloop? He's, he's, like, he's like, you fucking yeah. cheese. I'm going to bite your head off. <laughs> no, I'm good. That guy, Gouda. <laughs> was it a clean bite? Like, did he at least... A clean like, bite. Took it out. Just teeth. I mean, in and out. Yeah. It was like shark-like efficiency. Like, uh, Roxy damn. chewing the leg off yeah. a human. <laughs> Jack <laughs> opened his mouth and more rows of teeth showed themselves wow. to... Hannibal Lecter for yeah. that. Remember in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory when Augustus Gloop's dad eats the microphone? Or he eats the microphone when yeah, they're interviewing that's him. A good, that's what I imagine. Uh, some of the Jack Mike TV? Yeah. Yeah. No, no, Augustus Gloop, the oh, first Augustus one. Oh, Augustus Gloop. Yeah. yeah. You guys are vicious. <laughs> All right. Um, good show Watch here. Watch out another fucking sandwich, ho. Uh, You're not going to let me introduce the show? <laughs> no. I almost got out of it. I almost got out, and you went right back to it. No, you, Welcome back. You had insulted me Your earlier. Your intro was cheesy. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Sean Maroney. <laughs> Sean Maroney. <laughs> Sean Maroney. <laughs> what the hell is that? The real Sean Maroney. <laughs> you doing that? Yeah. Uh, no, we, sh- we we have deemed it every time. I guess he didn't like your joke. Whenever you don't like somebody's joke, you scream out Sean Maroney. I, I'm Ella, just going, Ella just looked at me like he looked at Jackie in the street. She's like, oh, we're doing that now. Right. What the hell was that? <laughs> what the hell was that? And, like, these memories flushed back from when he was Fat Ellis on the stage. <laughs> and, like Sean Maroney. And, oh, my God. That's really good. No, no. Right. I mean, I'm proud of the, you know. As you should be. You're right there, right? <laughs> Just don't. <laughs> I just think it's weird that like you guys have all these little inside jokes. Yeah. Well, maybe if you showed you up, you are more. part of that. It, it's one. like I just crawled up to the clubhouse and like y'all switched out right. all the porn mags. Yeah. Ooh. Popular mechanics here we go. Yeah. Oh, uh, you don't like booth. when they switch out the porn mags when you want new reading. I don't really do. Uh, I don't really do the porn mags. Oh. Right. I read Playboy for the articles. Huh. Uh, listen, for um, the interviews. very nice. Yeah. What a show we have here today. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah do. we do. Yeah, we do have a good show. Um, <laughs> we, we there's a lot of shit we're going to talk about, and uh, like you guys see, if you see the thumbnail, there's two really fun things that are happening today. Obviously, the, one of the biggest Shimona matches that we have with Bibiani and Roca. These two have been been teased. They're two of the biggest trivia minds that we have in the show, and they've been teased to play for like over a year now. They're finally doing it. It's for the championship. It happens on Friday. But the coolest, and it's pretty cool, but the coolest thing was over the weekend, or maybe it was like actually Thursday, One a fan had wrote me and said, hey, did you happen to listen to Jim Norton and Matt Sarah, their their podcast that they do? And they mention you guys. And I'm like, this guy's fucking with me because he knows Matt Sarah is like one of my favorite fighters. So he's, he's messing with me. I'm like, oh, okay, what did they say? They made some, I thought he was doing a troll thing. He's like, oh, okay. They, they mentioned some, Star Wars. They do something where yeah. you're trolling, right? So I'm like, all right, friend. So I, so. I start listening to the show, and I and I and I like the show anyway. Um, and I start to hear a little bit more of it, and then I'm the guy sent me the time code as well. And I'm like, all right, because it's a, they're really they're analyzing a lot of stuff. So I get to the time code and I start talking about movies because Matt Sarah's like a huge movie fan. Yeah, Norton's a great host too. He kills me. Yeah, he I've been me. on his show. He's the best. He yeah. kills me, and and his takes are are, are very funny. But so Matt Sarah starts talking about um, Collider. And he's like, he goes, you know, I watch this Collider. I like this the geeky stuff. I like watching this stuff. And he's like, he's like, and who's the guy? He's like, I was watching. I was watching this. And, and the guy starts talking about, because we were talking about the Khabib fight. And these guys talking about me, about how I want, because remember I told you, he won me a lot of money when he beat GSP. Mm-hmm. So he's, uh, so he's like, and I, he's like, who is the guy? He's like, I, I, I know what if you say his name. So his, his producer brings up, he goes, Christian? He's like, I don't know. And then he goes, and he's like, and he goes, Mark Ellis? No, it's not Mark Ellis. He's like, Roxy? No. It's like, uh, she's a girl. Riley? No, Riley's a girl, too. <laughs> and then... Back in middle school. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and, and then we started, like, he starts going through it. He starts talking about the show a lot. And then I actually... He, he hit me up on, on Instagram because we found all the fans were like, no, it's Christian. So we talked for a bit. And he really wants to come on live. So he's coming on today. He's going to call in. He's in New York. He's going to call in. We're going to talk movies. We'll talk UFC. Um, I don't know if he had a chance to watch any of the Schmodown, but I sent him uh, the Roca and Bibiani's match to see if I can get I want to get his... Oh, his, he'll love that. I, he'll love it. But yeah. I want to get his uh, you know, his analyzation of the actual analysis of the actual match. Mm-hmm. Um, but if he hasn't a chance to... He's a busy dude. But I love Matt Serra. I mean, Matt Serra, a, he's a Long Island kid. Um, he's like two or three years older than I am. I was I was rooting for him when he was on Ultimate Fighter, and now the fact that he's a, it's surreal mm-hmm. that he's that he's a fan of the show. So it's and be now cool to he talk does to know him. your name, and that's now he cool. does. Now he does. Um, <laughs> nah, it's not him. That's nah, not him, right? He calls. He starts. He starts calling me something else completely. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but anyway, uh, Jim Norton, as you, he was, t- they started talking about Star Wars, and he's he was killing me. He goes, he's like, ah, you know, 
I don't love the Star Wars the way you do. He's, he's like, I think George Lucas stinks. He goes, he goes, the Ewoks, they stunk. He goes, when I think about the, when I think about George Lucas, I think of the, the Christmas special. Oh. That's what I think of. And I'm like, but, he, but that's what I would love to tell Jim Norton is George Lucas hated the Christmas special. Yeah. He hated right. it. He wanted nothing. He almost shut down Star Wars because of it. He I almost it. shut down Star Wars watching it, though. Yeah, like, you, you I saw watched it, recently. it. I saw it a couple years ago. Uh, I was in Denver. And, How'd you uh, find it? Uh, uh, I was in Denver with Caparulo, uh, my John Caparulo, and we were uh, we were bored, and, and he's like, "Let's put on the Christmas special," and I'm like, I- "I've never seen it before," so I'm like, "How oh. bad can it be?" It's oh. it made me like Star Wars less for that day. I walked yeah. around like, "What have I devoted my life to?" This Arthur's is so bad. Would you, would you say it's unwatchable? Yes. I think yeah. It's un- yeah. It's not only it's even worse than unwatchable. It's like a movie it should not week. be viewed by anybody. It almost yeah. ruined the brand. It almost it was like a movie the of the week, right? It was on like a CBS or it something. It was something like yeah, 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 yeah. ABC. It, was it aired CBS? on television for Life Day. Yeah, it was. and <laughs> it was just bet you have like all the Wookiee family in there, which is fine. But like, there's a scene, and I'm not making this up. Chewbacca's dad goes into virtual reality and starts masturbating. Yes. That's an actual thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ha- he watches it and he gets turned on by a by a lady Wookiee, and he starts. It, you know, he's tugging he's on his Wookiee excited. dick. Yeah. <laughs> well. The movie, it, it also de- it also debuted, and you don't you know the answer, and so does Riley. So I'm gonna quiz um, the other lady in the room, uh, Roxy <laughs> and yeah. Makuga. Who, which character in Star Wars debuted on Bo- Boba Fett? You knew that. Yeah. Well done. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I actually would have gotten that. Really? Yeah. Josh McCook, a former movie trivia Shmodo champion of the world. Uh, uh, that's false. I oh. went to the finals. The one oh, you went to the finals. Okay. Uh, you think <laughs> I would know that? That's Queen's Cup owner Josh McCook. Yes. That you bring that up. I wish this embargo breaks today for this movie. But if you look at my social media, all I'm going to say is this: Go see this movie. This Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. I am I'm surprised say. with your response. Really. I I feel the same as oh, you. But you thought I wasn't gonna like it. I didn't think you weren't gonna like it. I didn't think you were gonna feel as strongly as you felt. I mean, really? I I, I just wow. I, I don't want to get you in trouble. Mark, uh, yeah, sure. I saw it last night as uh, well. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to get in trouble yet talking it about a, it. Would you, one question: Would you call it a musical? Nope. Nope. Not a musical. No. Uh, no. no. I'd say more of a biopic. By the def- it might have more songs and dan- or it might have more songs and performance than a musical yeah. would have, but it's not the no, correct it's category. More of a biopic. So Makuga can see it. Yeah. And I'll yeah. say Oh yeah. no, yeah, you 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 have to see it. Uh but well, yeah, because he's not singing songs that drive a plot line. Correct. He's right. not singing to I mean, us. Yeah, yes, he's he not is. looking the four. I don't know if that's the definition of it, though. And yes, he is. But I don't know if that's the definition of 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 uh, musicals. But, but but what I do want to say is this: my not concern with the actual performance, but like I'm a big a Queen. I love Queen. I love yeah, so many yeah. of the songs that I and I love. Um, and when Sasha Baron Cohen was announced to play him, I thought it was the perfect casting, right? Right. To play Freddie Mercury. To play Freddie Mercury. And so Rami Malek, I'm a big fan of as well, too. But I was like, ah, he's a lot smaller than Freddie Mercury, which is actually the exact opposite of what I thought. Because I thought that Sasha Baron Cohen and Freddie Mercury were like the same height. And it's where Sasha Baron Cohen was like 6'4", and I thought Freddie Mercury was like 6'2". He did seem Fred- really tall. Freddie Mercury was 5'10", mm-hmm. and, and Rami Malek was 5'9". So I let that bother me. You know, very, very minimally in the movie last night, I was like, ah, I just wish they were a little taller. Now I'm like, I, I don't give a shit. No, I mean, yeah. I, I, I think I would have forgiven it if Sasha Baron Cohen was Freddie Mercury, yeah. just because Freddie Mercury felt like he was eight feet tall yeah. every time he was on stage. Yeah. He had that personality, the showmanship. But yeah, I mean, Rami Malek, like that's that. I didn't feel as strongly as you did about the movie. Okay, but watching Rami Malek be. Freddie Mercury. It's like I, I this is this might even be bigger than a Daniel Day Lewis as Lincoln situation where remember when Daniel Day Lewis was Lincoln and it's like why is anybody else even showing up right. to the Oscars? Right. It's like just just mail him the statue so he doesn't have to put on a nice suit. I I as of now I feel it's the same I, way with I'm him. not disagreeing with you yeah. at at all. And I you just, but and you still haven't seen a Star is Born. I have not. Okay. So I'm I'm gonna go see, like I said, in my Oh, I think hands down hand it to him over Bradley Cooper. Well, yeah, I, uh, okay. I gotta see. But, but Bradley Cooper was my other front runner. I <laughs> my boy Timothy Chalamet, he's gonna get overlooked, but God was he good. Well he also had a big and it, it's you know what's hurting we're gonna hurt him, even though I haven't seen the movie, what's gonna hurt him is that he had such a big push last year. Yeah. Um but Welcome to the Chalamet. Hey. <laughs> um but Bye I did me. 
what I did, the thing is that I, I'm going to see Stars Born. I'm going to see all the movies. I'm, gonna, like, I'm not going to be my mother in law. Just root for one person. Right. And then if someone else wins, go, they shouldn't have won. <laughs> did you see it? No. <laughs> Does it every year? It drives me crazy. Oh, man. Oh, that one shouldn't have won. Why? Because. I didn't want that one to win. <laughs> Can we Fun. make like a Patreon tier where it's like you get to watch the Oscars with, with your mother-in-law? <laughs> you go, you go, you lose your mind. I, I think it'd be a lot you, of fun for the fans out there. Yeah. yeah. How accurate what, his impression what is? What did they say? They said yeah. hello. <laughs> yeah. They said welcome to the Oscars. They said you don't need string cheese like that. Who who is that? That's the statue. <laughs> I saw a young man t- bite the head off a string cheese. Can <laughs> Danish Christian Harloff go watch with your mother-in-law? <laughs> Danish Christian Harloff, let me ask you a question. Okay. So what would you say? Danish Christian Harloff is here. Yeah, First yeah. of all, how was your concert? Uh, listen, it's very lovely. Uh, it's I, I, Stein Bromson yeah, puts on a show like I've never behind, seen before. Did you go behind the uh, behind the scenes? So what happened was uh, my friend Hans. Yes. He works as security. It's a venue. Yes. Uh, it's you know the Danish dome. Of course. The dome. Of course. So we go to the dome and um, see. He says, "Listen, Stein is only doing about twenty minutes of meet and greets, and if you'll sign." But she ever. knew you were there. But she knew I was right, coming. Right, right, And you're and her s- biggest fan. I, she knew exactly. So as soon right. as I walked in, you know, Hans pushes me in, and yeah. there's Stein Bromson. Yeah. She's warming up her vocals. She's drinking okay. her tea. What kind of tea was she drinking? She drinks in uh, like it's an Earl Grey mixed with a chai. And you like that? Yeah, it's, it's very popular. You have that in your house now because of that. I do. It's, I mean, it's, I only do what Stein Bromson does. Of course. So. I know. Talk right. about so Stein, uh, Stein, Stein. Stein compared to Queen. Is well, so here's what. Well, so I go backstage and we are talking, and I says, "Your uh, accent's <laughs> dropping there, Christian." What, what are you talking your, about? Your accent dropped a little bit. Where does it go? Uh, it's back now. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's never left. <laughs> he, he was just a little tired. He you know, sounds different when he's so tired. So here's what happens. Okay. So I say, Stein, have you seen this Bohemian Rhapsody movie? And she says, no. I says, you have to see it. Freddie Mercury is incredible. He's played by a robot man. Yeah. And, uh, Mr. Robot, of course. Yes. And uh, they have all the people that were in the band as well. And yeah. they play all of the songs. And was she, was she receptive to And that? Stan Bromson was like, as soon as I'm done with this concert, I'm going to see Bohemian good. Rhapsody. Did she see it? Uh, I believe she did, and she loved it. Oh, oh good. What is uh, Christian's other favorite member of the band besides uh, Freddie? Oh, is it Brian May person? Oh, mm-hmm. oh Brian May yes. person. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, well, thank you. well, I'd she like to thank you for, for joining us. Of course, and anytime. Uh, I'm also a big fan of the Sarah Fighter Man. Oh, good. Yes. Oh, uh, Matt Sarah, yes, the Mary, UFC um, welter, welterweight champion. In, da- in Denmark, we do not yeah. punch each other. Oh. We uh, we hug hard. Right. And the person that has hugged hard. And, and a couple pats. Correct. Right. And then that's how you win a fight. It's a, okay, hug, it's a hug fight. I love that. But, well, okay, well, thank yes. you so much, to Christian Harloff. Nice to see you. Um... They, it was, it was literally like Josh McCuga left. He did. And yeah. another person came. Transcending. In. Oscar I mean, contender? Guys, I went out to get a water. So yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you, Clark, yeah, Clark Kent and Superman missed each other again. Oh, man. Crazy. Um, oh, speaking of, which, speaking of fighting, this is something that's pretty cool, too. I didn't, I didn't get a chance to, um, to announce this yesterday. And I didn't get a chance to announce that Matt Serra was on yesterday. So you guys know that. Matt Serra will be on today. He's going to call in. Tomorrow, we have two guests. Normally, we don't like to do two guests, but this is just too special to do. The great John Noble from Lord of the Rings and Fringe will will be on the show uh, tomorrow. We're going to talk to John Noble. But, and and, and just as cool, coming in a little later, is the former uh, boxing champion of the world. Heavyweight champion. Heavyweight champion of the world. Vladimir Klitschko is going to be on the show. (laughs) Which is amazing. It's incredible. Vladimir Klitschko is going to be here. And you think we can tall. get him to punch him in the face? Six, eight. Punch you in the face? Like with a glove. Like no, 50%. Glove. No. I think if uh, lawsuit, you keep bro. doing the, the Danish Christian. <laughs> Yeah, he'll punch if you, you in hosted the face. as Danish Christian, I think a punch might might oh, happen okay. at some yeah. point. Well, Mark Fernandez actually is going to help interview him because he because lo- he likes him so much. Yeah, Fernandez yeah. is going to come in here and interview. Well, him you too. wouldn't take a I, I wouldn't take a punch from a for, from a heavyweight champ. Uh, dude, the guy's like six, he's like six eight. Yeah, he would he would tap you with his finger and knock your teeth out. I don't yeah. want to take a punch from a flyweight. No, no, the Vladimir Klitschko will knock your head off your shoulder. Yeah, and he's he means like what forty two. He's One got punch. a lot of power. One punch, half a punch. Yeah. His arm is like the size of like a, a, a it's a it's like twenty seven crowbars. It's yeah. like the guy is he's those Klitschko brothers. Yeah, the, I they, saw his brother fight Lennox Lewis at um at the Staples Center. Who won the? It was it was a three it was a trilogy, right? Of no, Klitschko the, brother fights. 
Well, no, the, 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 each, other, each other. They never fought. Klitschko's never fought. I thought they fought each other. No, they never. No, they, no, they, they never refused. Did. Yeah, the, the organizations wanted them to, but they refused. They Christian, just the Gaudis. Yeah. Quick reminder yeah. that uh, the show actually starting early tomorrow. Thank you, Roxy yeah. Stryer. The show tomorrow starts at nine thirty a.m. because John Noble is coming in at ten. Wow. And we wanted to warm up the audience a little bit by getting you know getting our our banter and our cheese talk out of the way. Yeah. So we start at nine thirty, <laughs> and then ten o'clock comes in. Noble will hit the scene, and then I think Klitschko comes in what at eleven. Uh, yes, 11 o'clock. Okay, so 11 o'clock Damn. for Vladimir Klitschko. What a stack day. show that is. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's really cool. So. Ask him how he eats string cheese. <laughs> Ask him how he eats string cheese. Imagine a big boxer like that, just like still like... It's like a, like a little... It'll look like a little peg. <laughs> Wearing the gloves, yes, still yeah. trying to get like the I'm little... I'm telling you, I don't think you guys understand how tall this guy is. <coughs> right. I mean, how big he is. He's like 6'8". He's like he was a huge heavyweight. He's an oak. Why, why don't you think we understand? <laughs> Because <laughs> when, because it's one thing to say it, but when you see him, I guarantee you, after he leaves, like, I didn't realize how massive that dude is. Yeah. It's it, The first time I saw Mike Tyson, and he's not that tall. No, he's like he's like six feet, maybe. Yeah, but the size of, like, the girth of the man, I mean, that sounds kind of... The presence of Mike Tyson is, is scary. Is, yeah, it's yeah. huge. I've, I've seen him in the comedy store a couple of times and just, like, been up close next to him. Yeah. And you just, there's, like, a level of fear. Super nice guy. Yeah. There's a level of fear that I don't know that I felt. Yeah. Otherwise. Because right. he could kill you at any second. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just <laughs> like and he very well might. Yeah. yeah. It's it, it's a weird thing. Yeah. Uh so my a good, very good friend of mine produced him on a bunch of stuff too. Mm -hmm. Said the same thing. Very nice yeah. guy, but same thing. There's just this electricity about Tyson that he right. has, but you just don't know when or what he will say, what kind of Tyson you're gonna get on day one or what kind of Tyson you're gonna get on day two. Um and I would actually love to have him in well Tyson obviously but I would love to have my friend in to talk about it um, oh yeah about his experiences working with Tyson and but his show apparently is great yeah people have seen like he's, his he's, his spoken yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean well he's he's always been it's just something about Tyson right mm -hmm. there's something about him that you just want to watch him so um anyway Vladimir Klitschko the former heavyweight champion of the world will be in here tomorrow he's got a brand new book we're gonna to talk to him about that and as well as john noble so what a show we have tomorrow and we're not even halfway done with with this uh gem today i can't wait until uh we get get a chance to talk to former champ matt Serra. uh i want to talk because he was he was talking about venom like he had he was i think he liked he liked venom roxy so you guys are gonna get along um, I'm excited about it. You're excited about it. I just want to hear his takes on on movies in general because I want to see what he likes. Mm -hmm. I want to see because he to me represents. I was listening to them talk on that show, and it's it, they come from a very casual movie fan, and we don't have that really on the show because we're, we we get hit with the news. We know too much. We, it's it's true. We know we, we know. can't put the genie back in the bottle. Well, even yesterday they were talking. Baby. Yeah, they were talking about Henry Cavill, and then they didn't know like all the details. And and uh, Jim Norton was like, ah, he probably just doesn't want to do it, and and he probably the studio says he's too old, and that's definitely not why. But they don't they don't people don't pay Maybe attention. Maybe he knows to something shit. we don't know. Yeah, it's true. No, it's nice to come back down to earth that when you get in the conversation yeah. with just regular folk. I was at a wedding a few years ago. And and this couple was talking to me. They found out that like you and I had this thing called schmoes. And they're like, oh, we just saw Battleship and we loved it. And I'm just thinking like, what? How do I? What, what am I? Do, yeah. What am I going to do? Oh, you should go watch our review where we shit all over. You like slap him in the I, face. I don't know what to do. Yeah. And so so it's just like, hey, that Liam Neeson, <laughs> boy, can he talk? Right. Yeah. You, you, just, you grab their hand and go. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> That's it. Stop talking. Go watch something else. The Departed is literally on television right now. Go watch it. Just grab him like in Billy Madison. Yeah. Stay here right. as long as you can. Rattle those cheeks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's the best. <laughs> um, what the hell time is it? Do we even know? Uh, uh, it's 10.30. Um, I'm not allowed to check my phone. Yeah, I, I have one I more question for Dana Tarloff. Yes. We can bring him back in oh, here. You're because, him back. Yeah, sure. because... Oh, oh, that, oh, oh you want like one more question? Yeah. For so I'm doing this big show uh, Friday. Oh, at Los Globos yes. in in on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. You can get tickets at markelslot.com. Use the promo code Schmoes. It's hosted by Josh and Ken. Christian's not going to be there because he's a he's a father. He's got two oh, yes, kids. Yes. But if Danish Harloff, shit. what kind of what what would Danish Harloff has he done stand up? Has he attempted? Because the American Christian did stand up for over ten years. Yes. Mm. So the Danish Harloff. What's the comedy scene like? Great question. Well, as they say in in many said over ten. As they say in mythology, that a flute with no holes is no flute at all. But a donut with no holes is a Danish. And that is the kind of comedy I will be bringing. To to the Los Globos Theater. Okay, well, Friday, first October of all, I wasn't inviting you on the show. Oh, I want to be, oh, I want to be crystal nice. clear about that. Oh. I was just asking what it would be like if you did stand up. Well, you know, there are many inside jokes in Denmark 
we have many speed skating jokes. Of course, there's the Johan Koss jokes, because he's our most famous speed skater. Right. But you uh, never joke about uh, Brom. No, 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 no. Stein Bromson is a non-joking no. matter, as right, Mark. Right, right, right. She <laughs> is a national treasure. You know, and uh, we are very big fans. What do you think about the host that I have for the show, uh, Josh McCougar and Ken Knapsack? I am very big fans of the Ken Knapsack. Josh McCougar's Nazi is a weirdo, but uh, they have this podcast too it's brash. called The Afternoons. Yeah. He's too brash and outlandish yes. for you. Ken is a fan of Star Wars, as am I. He likes this show, Game of Thrones. And um, <laughs> so I, I'm i a fan of Ken Knapsack. But Josh McCougar, he's always talking about the bad boys, right. too. Right. And the bad boys, one. It's a lot of bad boys. It's a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and he cooks with two much garlic. A lot of garlic when yeah. he makes his pasta carbonara. It's uh, weird. Yeah. But I was I will say I'm very I purchased front row tickets for the show. I'm bringing my wife. Nice. And uh, she what, is What's her name? Her name is Helen. Uh, oh. <laughs> is yes. Helen is is Helen Danish Christian's wife or is it just a random well, uh, oh, no, no, no. It's, uh, Helen is my actual wife. Uh, she is. Yeah, lovely. I know, but it, I thought this was yeah, like the Danish <laughs> version of Christian, so. <laughs> to leave the guy alone and let him do his shit. <laughs> there is no Danish. <laughs> Mark. We're world I, building I, here. I live, We're world building. <laughs> I live in Denmark, Mark. Hello? <laughs> yeah, no, I know. So I thought Helen was the Danish like, version it of this. I feel like I it would have been like Sally. I thought you guys were like, Sally. Like, Sally. Poor guy. No. You, ever, you ever play Yes End in improv? <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. Mark, you don't understand. In, in Denmark, we do not have the name Sadie. We don't. Hel- uh, there Helen. he is. There he is. <laughs> there he is. Me. Helen oh, is that, obviously wait, her he's a real middle guy. Yeah, that's where he came because Eddie, Eddie's from Denmark. Hell, and look, go, da, go, da, go down. Gymnasium. Look, look, his favorite. Look who's S- favorite is. Stein Bromson. <laughs> And of course, <laughs> Nicholas Linden, he's a very famous handballer. <laughs> Have you ever met Nicholas uh, Linden? Oh, you kidding Jeez. me? Nicholas Linden used to live in my building when he grew up in Copenhagen. This is good. he's a famous handballer. What, what famous. team does he play for? Uh, this is the uh, the Denmark the, the main Denmark team. They're sponsored by the Xbox. <laughs> <laughs> see if you can see there. And uh, <laughs> no, I, yes. y'all are like the worst collection of human beings. <laughs> <laughs> just, there's this poor guy in Denmark. <laughs> This is wife's really name. He's, he's, I mean, he's, he's, he's pretty Denmark. cute. I think. Is he's her name really fun. Helen? No, I said oh, no. Yes, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no. I don't know. It's my mistress or my wife. I can't oh, tell. All right, shut it down, Christian. Uh, oh yes. boy. All right, <laughs> Christian, you can you can take off. Oh, tell God. tell Josh to come back in here, and uh, you can get tickets. You can oh, retweet straight. my pinned tweet, and you can win a uh, gift card. I, I so want to know how many friend requests that guy has got. <laughs> And he's probably just like, what in the world? Mark, have you uh, uh, pitched the Los Globo show yet? Uh, did I miss that part? Uh, n- uh, yeah, no, we mentioned it. You oh, and Ken okay. are hosting. Oh, so cool, cool, great. Just great, added great. Jay Washington to the show as well. Oh, nice. So. Cool, cool, What's cool. the Big gift show. card for? Uh, movies. Get, it's a Fandango yeah. gift card. So yeah. Yeah. Why, And uh, these Jackos are going to be giving one away on stage, too. So if you get tickets to the show, you can go and you can win a uh, gift card, too. Mark Ballin. Ellis uh, Comedy? Yeah, uh, Mark Ellis Live. Mark Ellis Live. So dot com. Go get those tickets and make sure. Sell it out, everybody. Let's Let's do it. Um, before we go to break, and no, well, before we got about half an hour before we go to break, and we come back with Matt, Sarah, we are going to figure out what the hell's going on in the world of movie news because there's some stuff um, that is happening or did happen, and I think we talk about right off the bat. And you guys, I believe, covered it on Movie Talk yesterday. Was uh, <laughs> Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman was pushed back. Uh, Wonder Woman was pushed back to June 5th, 2020, and they kind of announced that, like, hey, it's it's supposed to be here because that, that's a famous date in Wonder Woman lore. Mm. And you buying it? Yeah, to a certain extent, just because I honestly think it's just them separating themselves from the DCU to get, so they can figure out time to get their yeah. shit together a little bit because you have no idea how Aquaman's going to be, how Shazam's going to be, and then it was going to be Wonder Woman, then the Joker movie, then Birds of Prey. So now Birds of Prey is going to come out before... Wonder, Wonder Woman, Woman. Okay. but I think that Wonder Woman, it's like, look, we have no idea. Is Henry Cavill coming back? Who's going to be our new Batman? And you have to look at it. this. This version of Wonder Woman is different than the first one because the first one, I think people wanted it to be a standalone movie. Give her her own movie. You don't need all the Justice League being crammed in there in cameos. But now, I think the DCU looks at Wonder Woman as she is the pillar from which you're going to build the rest of the DCU. Yeah. So if you need a new Batman. Or you need to put, put it in, in that, Superman. Yeah. Maybe they get in that movie in 1984. So, Mark, you actually think that they will make script changes to Wonder Woman, and that's what the delays I'm are about. I'm sure they're probably tweaking it a little bit, but no, I, I don't think it's a major thing. I don't think it's like major reshoots or you overhauls. You don't think Batman's going to become like the next, the second biggest character in the movie? You think he could be no. introduced in like a brief cameo? I think it's going to be brief, if anything, just because I don't think they want to make the same Batman v Superman. You know, just. 
going a little too quickly with it. Like, you can tease Batman or tease Superman, but... We went to see uh, First Man last week with my parents. Yeah. And the Did you like it? Batman, Superman, uh, First Man? I thought it was very slow. It was slow. Yeah. yeah. It, was, it was good. Too I, long? I, 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 yeah, it was a little long. For sure. me, I wanted it to be my like Apollo 13. And I, then and when an hour into the movie, I wasn't. I realized it wasn't going to be Apollo 13. Right. And I was like, yeah, okay. But, it, I mean, Ryan Gosling's fantastic. The whole story, it just it, it didn't move enough for me. Okay. I, wanted, so, I wanted a little more space race than you, Neil you, Armstrong life. You are That's in the all. popular opinion. Yeah. Uh, you I, I was in the other side of it. But, I mean. Dude, her eyes are so big the whole time. I think it's probably 50-50. But I think that I, I think mo- most people that saw the movie, it's why it also didn't do very well because there was a lot of interest in it. No, it's or not where you and I are. Like because I, I loved the movie. I yeah. loved it. I thought it was great. Um, but a lot of people yeah. lie where McCoog and Roxy it still might be. Oh, no, what? Roxy liked this. Sorry, Sorry it's a McCougan. top five of the Excuse year me. for me. Is it Sorry. really? Right I didn't now. mean to yeah. jump okay. so quickly. No, you're right. You're right because yeah, you like. I know you like the movie. Yeah, really it's like just it. it's I, top ten. I'll say top ten. I'm not sure. I haven't. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I saw that in Stars Born basically in the same week, mm-hmm. and I was way more moved by Stars Born, which I didn't think was going to happen. Yeah. Beardo, did you see First Man yet? I have not. Okay. I mm-hmm. think that it's such an amazing story about the kind of strain this situation puts on relationships. Oh, and I, I get that, but I didn't want that. Right, right, totally. It was not the movie you wanted, I but we've seen less. the movie you wanted before, right. and this was about who? Neil the Armstrong. First man. Yeah, I get right. it. I get it. And yeah. so it wasn't, it wasn't First Man and only the moon and his journey on there for the 20 minutes he was there. I don't know how long he was actually That's there. Probably m- many more yeah. many more minutes than that. It was first man. No, I get it. I, I do. Uh, I just... It, anyway, this this was about... The, uh, the Aquaman trailer was before the movie. Oh. And it starts, oh. right? The Aquaman trailer starts and my mom leans in and she goes, I read this book. It's great. And she started watching the trailer and I was like, Come on, this is the Aquaman trailer. And she goes, oh, I thought it was the lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Which was a st- I lost it. Uh, I thought she didn't even oh, get it. Oh, She would yeah. turn there and go, no, issue number yeah. 57. Yeah. Yeah. Aquaman great. meets the That would have been amazing. But I do, I do want to ask Riley's opinion on this whole Wonder Woman thing. Because yeah. like, um, I think Ellis makes some good points of what they try to do and distinguish themselves. Because there's no connection right now with or plan with the DCU. They're trying to get it back and form plus you got all these other standalone DC movies yeah right? and I'll also note that Wonder Woman was coming out November 1st of 2019 and yeah. so that would have been less than a month after the Joker movie comes out okay cool so but so they're pushing it almost eight months yeah Whoa. Yeah, because yeah. because then Birds of Prey comes out in February, and Wonder Woman can be seen as a summer tentpole movie. I mean, sure. I'm sure that they're probably reshooting stuff. I don't know if it's like a major overhaul. Is right. that your read on it, Ryan? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Jeff Goldstein, uh, the president of domestic distribu- uh, distribution at Warner Brothers, said they had great success in the summer, so we want to go back to the summer. I think it's a little bit of that. I think it's a little bit of the Joker. I think it's a little bit... There, I, I think it more has to do with the idea that they might be slowly revamping the DC universe. I think they're going to give this some uh, more bells and whistles, maybe lighten it up a bit, just really take their time on this and see how Aquaman Shazam does. I don't know about this Birds of Prey, though, coming in before that. That worries me, because then are going to try to rejigger some universe stuff and introduce new characters, and then it's going to affect Wonder Woman, and they're like waiting to see what those movies will be so that the flagship Wonder Woman can, you know... Bring figure that out home. or bring it back home. I think if I anything, know. Birds of Prey would introduce like a new Gotham-y character, maybe a Batman or something like that, but I, I don't think Birds of Prey is the right landing spot to even tease Batman. I think that that's the movie that should be like Wonder Woman was in 2017, 16, is that it should be just a standalone story about the the, sh- the shit going on in Gotham City, right? And then Wonder Woman can be the big juggernaut that helps launch yeah. other movies. I think that so much is going to take shape in the next like year or so. They're gonna they're gonna have to just reassess everything and right. really look at how they want to plan it out. And I think Wonder Woman is like their biggest property right now, as far as as far as box office stuff and as far as overall critical success. I know that obviously Batman is the big property, but if you look at what Wonder Woman did and it's riding high right now, you protect that property. Mm-hmm. You protect it, you make sure that you when, when you release it, it's the time you want to release it, that it's going to connect into the properties that you want it to, to connect into, and you 
you really have to protect that property at all costs. And if this is what they want to do, and, and, a, and going back to June is what they want to do, then they should do it. If that's what Patty Jenkins wants to do, if that was part of her request, then, you should, then that's what she should do. I don't yeah. think the movie's in you trouble. You can trade wide receivers and running backs. you got to hold on to the quarterback. Yeah, yeah. Star Wars another reason many times. is that it, they're, they're, because Warner Brothers as a company also had the $6 billion man opening June 5th, 2020. That's the Mark Wahlberg movie. That got yanked off the schedule the same time this was announced. Which so, one was that? I'm sorry. The Six Billion Dollar Man. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that movie's been circulated for ever. Yeah, with Mark Wahlberg playing the Six Billion Dollar yeah. Man, but that's totally off the schedule now. Wow. So my I, I, another part of me is thinking Warner Brothers likes money and they want to spread out their the, their wealth around the year. Creed so three. Why would you Why would you force Wonder Woman a, a month after the Joker and have all that P and A campaigning going up yeah. towards the end of the year when now because you don't have the six billion dollar man which maybe was a summer ten pole mm-hmm. Wonder Woman is definitely your summer ten pole. So I think I think there's a lot of other reasons and not just oh no they're panicking they right. have to reshoot. I think you're right and I think that if you look at let's use Star Wars as an example with Solo and Last Jedi uh, too close. Too close together, you can only put mm-hmm. the, you can only put the marketing a between Last Jedi when it started, and then because it's the same studio as Avengers, you, all the marketing went to Avengers. And yeah, Solo got nothing. People don't appreciate how what what a crazy thing that Marvel pulled off with having Black Panther come out in February and then right. Infinity War coming out right. and moving it up to April. Like that is that, that that's not. We're gonna look back on that and be like, man, they were riding so high well, with the, house money because of what they were able to establish. They have it established serialized movies. Right. That's the reason because. Star Wars doesn't have that with Solo and Last Jedi. They're completely two different movies, so you don't have to watch one to watch the other one. You you had to watch Black Panther in order to be invested all the way through mm-hmm. in, in Avengers. You could have watched it without it, but it didn't have the same impact for when certain things happen in the movie. And you're like, well, wait a minute. That's not what I... I just got so attached to all these people in this movie. Um, so I will say though, if you're this this weekend was a rough weekend for Marvel TV with Iron Fist getting canceled. Yeah, we talked about it for a bit yesterday. Yeah, Luke Cage getting take canceled. On. They may know how to do movies really well, but their TV department ha- hits real highs and lows. I mean, yeah. Yeah. it's well because there's so much of it, and there's also yeah. I mean, well, there's the difference between it's all about leadership and anything, right? Right. In any part of business. And I know that we praise Feige, but he deserves it. Feige over here, and the sure. Pearl Mutter is okay. Yeah, he's okay. He's he's, he's got some hits with with Punisher and, and Daredevil, but and Jessica um, Jones, Jessica Jones, and Jessica Jones, and I think a lot of people like. We thought basically what we said yesterday okay. was that Luke Cage was the show. That I was surprised it was pulled because I, from the people that I had heard that saw it liked it, but Roxy made a great point with in this in this overall kind of stratosphere of people talking about it, the ones that she heard, and correct me if I'm if I'm misquoting you, but like the from ones she usually hears about, Daredevil, Punisher. Yeah. That's really it. And then yeah. after that, Jessica Jones. Yeah. Right. For some, I, I, I think everybody's view of that Luke is Cage. different. Like I, I, I like Luke Cage a lot better than about, I like anything best. except for Daredevil. Well, best. Best. And I, no, that's watching. what I'm talking casual about too. Fans. I, I think casual fans, casual fans. I, I can't put the Punisher quite that high because the Punisher was the series I was most excited for, and it didn't feel like that had the same hype as certainly Daredevil. And I thought that hype was on a par with uh, with Luke Cage. So I was surprised at that. I was not surprised at this at all. I think the delivery of Luke Cage. Age was the problem for me was because the ep- it was too many episodes. The first season was a mess after, se- after episode six or seven. Uh, I still haven't watched se- season two, so I can't really say much. But I mean, Luke Cage and and Iron Fist are supposed to be like you know the heroes for hire. That was their goal was to go to that. Right. But they botched Iron Fist so bad that it brought Luke Cage down with it. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, and you know, we don't know what's going to happen with the Disney streaming service coming out next year. Right. It's it's hard for me to think. That they would want to put Iron Fist on that in the current form, but Luke Cage possibility. Just, yeah, I, agree, I agree with you on that. My, my only fear with like the Daredevil thing is that because Daredevil's so hard R and the Punisher so hard R, right. that Disney is like well, we don't want yeah, that. Yeah, that's what we talked about yesterday. We just don't know if they're going to have that that yeah. kind of ever they're going to ever have that kind of division in Disney if they need it for the brand. So who the hell knows? What's that about Danish Harloff way? No, no more Dan- no more Danish. <laughs> I have, no, no, we're good, I have we're good. a totally different question. <laughs> yeah. Who are the birds of prey? Okay. Good, Roxy. So, uh, let, let Roxy hit it. What is so, it? Hawkeye. <laughs> no, no. Bobby Birds. <laughs> Donny Feathers. Condor Man. Condor the Man. The T-Birds. I mean, he just nailed it. I really don't need yeah. to. Yeah. Rizzo. Uh, it, so it's the movie that's going to be headed by Harley Quinn. Oh, okay. uh, And her girl gang of kick-butt somewhat villains. Oh, uh, okay. Like Catwoman. Like birds. She she uh, will be Chicks. in the... So we're going to go from birds... Of, 
supposedly we're going to go from Birds of Prey to Gotham City Siren, and we're going to uh. get some of the girls uh, once and then some other time. So in total, we'll end up having a Catwoman, a Batwoman, a Poison Ivy, a Batgirl, uh. Uh, all of the You're trying the to establish new parts of the I IP. like that. Eventually. Yeah. God, every time you said Birds of Prey, I was like, if they bring back Hawk Girl from the DC Universe, no, I'm going to be... Hawk Girl isn't involved, but uh, no. I loved but, her. But look. Sierra Renee. But this is the thing, though. The plan... You like sh- that character? Yeah, I loved the her. The plan and the strategy... Is is something that it, it makes sense. Like it's a good plan and strategy. It's all about execution, right? mm-hmm. because the same thing with like like Suicide Squad, right? Mm-hmm. Plan of Suicide Squad, great execution, not so great. Because if that movie would have hit, would have been amazing for fans and critics. We're talking about a different DCEU right now. One hundred percent. I mean, we are looking at it because because you could have had if all of those characters would have been like the most. And again, this isn't any movie, but if it's, let's say there's some of the most memorable. Characters we've ever seen, and not just doable because because Will Smith was was great in the movie, mm-hmm. and jo- even Joel Courtney was was great in the movie. Jai, I don't care. I Joel, always call him Joel. Joel Kinnaman. Joel, Joel Courtney. <laughs> this two combined, they do, they deserve one praise. Um, <laughs> Joel Courtneyman. But the point is, the point is, <laughs> Jai Old Courtneyman. Yeah. The Sorry. point is, if they would have um, really hit. And you could have spun off all of their movies together. Essentially, what MCU did. We're looking at. Oh, I, I'm I'm. Convinced of it, and it's a great, and that's why I think Birds of Prey is a great business strategy. If it hits, they took the one thing that people yeah. liked, or one of the few things that people that universally yeah. acclaimed out of Suicide Squad, right. and it's interesting because she, I think, in 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 Birds of Prey, by the time that stuff comes around, it's basically Harley Quinn is leaving her relationship with Joker. She's kind of splitting from Joker, so I don't know if we'll see Jared Leto's Joker in the movie. It might be a character that's lurking around mm-hmm. somewhere, but it's not going to focus on that as much right. as it is. There's a new baddie that's something. Sinister, black, black, mask. black mask, yeah. yeah, which is typically a Batman villain, but I'm I'm pretty excited about it. And honestly, and Batgirl, maybe that maybe there's a Batgirl sighting. And is Black yeah. Mask a, a girl too? No. Oh. And we've got um, Huntress in there, and Barbara Gordon, and uh, my oh. favorite Black Canary. So it's like so many characters to choose from, and and an extended universe that could These go. These guys are killing me. There, yeah. especially I wanna, when I'm not loving. Sounds a like lot you walked into a bird store. Yeah, we need a camera on them too, because they get so excited. Yeah. Sometimes, like you see the back, they must have been giggling. Like kids, they're putting up pictures of real birds in the back, and they were fucking losing <laughs> no, their minds they're, back there. They're they're doing the uh, Riley close up. Are they doing the close up <laughs> again? That, that's what they're laughing. It was for. a good question though, Mark. I, if Joker is in is in there, and we have Jared Leto coming out that close to uh, the Joker out. movie, yeah, it'll be so interesting. Yeah, I, I, I don't. I'm not sure what they're doing with that, yeah. right. but I don't need Jared Leto's Joker in this. I don't need, do you need him ever. ever again. No. I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate it. And if if James Gunn or whoever's going to do Suicide Squad 2, you imagine that Joker's going to be in there somewhere. And I'd be up for a Suicide Squad 2. I didn't hate the first one. Here's the thing. If Joaquin Phoenix comes out and kills it. This is where I was going with it. Nobody's going to care about Jared Leto. They're going to want more Joaquin Phoenix. Find a way to combine both of them. They I just started like off that. as a separate franchise, uh, and and if and but don't ever say it doesn't connect. And it's a different time frame already. But can though. you have how, two how far off? You're the starting 80s. it in 80s. the but late seventies, eighties. Is the vibe that they're Wonder going Woman for with the Joker movie? Yeah. Yeah. Can we see anything there? I mean, we where she's yeah. but we've already she's seen. She's in time. We, we saw Batman. We know what happens in eighty four. Good thing. What happens in eighty four? Pretty greatest album ever. <laughs> pretty okay. kick-ass rock record comes out called nineteen eighty four. Yeah. Here's here's the really good thing that DC has going for it. We have as many universes as we want. We can jump timelines. We have time travel. We've got the Flash. We can go anywhere, any place. True. And uh, there are ways to combine universes, as we've seen on the DC TV shows with yes. Supergirl mm-hmm. being it on a different could, universe. It just could get, Which that it could is... get messy. Oh, very convoluted. I'm not saying they should do no, it. No. I'm just saying There's that there it. are ways yeah, to Yeah, no, it. I agree with you. I just say it's, it's, just tr- it's just tricky because especially you were trying not to confuse... <laughs> confuse people who don't know what the hell is going on. TV is one thing because that's really an invested audience that's tuning in just for the show to with the movies. It's like, oh, there's a new but yeah, the Batman strings movie? connecting see it. the strings connecting the world in the DC TVU, and I stopped watching a year and a half ago, so I'm, I probably am wrong at this point. But it looks like Russell Crowe in A Beautiful Mind. It's just like hey, Barry went here, right. here, here, here to Earth six seventy four <laughs> forty thirty two, and now there's Supergirls right. on a different Earth, so Supergirl can come into the crossover when they come to the other Earth. Now they're on the other Earth with the changelings and all this stuff, and now and arrows, flash, 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 two arrows, and flash points here, and Barry has no idea where he is, and everybody else is kind of confused as to where Iris or Barry is. Stuck in the speed Who's wherever? And who's Black Canary? Where's Black Canary's? Black Canary's 
screaming or it's Earth 2 Black Canary? No, she's Nobody Black knows, now. Christian. Okay. That's well, why I stopped I watching. Know. Except for Deb McCuga, who read the books. He did. That's true. Did. That's um, just the book. All right, let's move. Let's the move book. away from this, please. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, what's next? Uh, there's some. Uh, there's a great article that just dropped at THR that uh, oh. they decided to not, um, make an Oscar campaign for the entire supporting cast for A Quiet Place. They were the originally going to push Emily Blunt, right? For and maybe supporting actress, yeah. uh, John Krasinski. But now they've decided that there was real no. True lead. Okay. So they're going to push Ensemble. everybody in supporting actor characters. Oh, they're pushing everybody in supporting. The, so, yeah, the entire oh, okay. cast. Because I see. I see what you're saying. I, AKA, they didn't think that they could win in the lead spot, but in supporting. I think that's true. Yeah, maybe so. I mean, people have, yeah. done, that. People have done that in the past. Do you yeah. think John Krasinski gets a best uh, director nomination? No. Wow. No. I, I think it's a great movie. I don't. I, do I too. The one thing I could see a quiet place landing. I, I don't think it sneaks in the top ten for best picture, but I think I could see like a best original screenplay is really all that I could see from that. I mean, maybe some technical stuff. It's sound design, design. Top design. music's yeah. good too. It's definitely in my top ten. It's yeah. a it's a great movie. The score. I, I don't I don't know if they should have harsher criteria or whatnot, but I don't think they are both supporting. I think they were both leads. I, I, agree. I agree. I tend to agree. It's very and hard I, to, to yeah. quantify. I know, but like I How know. much screen time did right. you get per movie well, remember, running time? You remember they, yeah, they nominated, or they tried to push Andy Serkis for supporting actor for Planet of the Apes, and he was clearly the lead. Yeah. And, uh, right. So they tried right. to do it because of exactly what you said. It's like, They're like, it's but not, he's a monkey! <laughs> well, but, Come on! But the problem, can't the problem is that they just can't compete, not compete, or they're just not going to get the kind of love that some of these other movies are going to get. So they go for the they go for the supporting. Same role. thing with Dunstan yeah. checks in. He's clearly I mean, the lead of that movie. Uh, Jason Alexander plays supporting a character. Movie. Okay, supporting right, character. Whatever whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um, so that I mean that, that makes sense. I understand what you're doing. Anything else you got, Riley? Uh, Mark's excited. Mary Poppins returns new trailer. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. 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 Let's. Let's I see that. I think we've seen. No, that's, that's why I was that's, that's, that's I just think movie. she's overrated as a babysitter. Yeah. I think she's a horrible. Uh, she just shoves sugar down the kids' throats when they, whenever they, they, they want it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, magic around kids. children is not uh, healthy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I I saw the last trailer, the last promotional piece, and I thought it was oh, great. Special well, trailer. Yeah, we, we, we don't need to watch a trailer right yeah. now. Yeah, it's fine. Do you ever hear the uh, the That's theory, Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? Do you ever hear the theory that she's um, uh, a professor at Hogwarts? Oh, no, no. that's yeah. amazing. I like that crossover. Yeah. Slytherin, baby. Did you make that up? <laughs> no. Yeah, it's a theory. Because, because you did it like you were really proud. <laughs> you did it like this. That's uh, exactly how we hey. delivered it. No, no, no. You're like, you guys ever hear the theory that she's a professor at Hogwarts? <laughs> I like that theory. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Where did you hear that theory? Just came up with that. Yeah. You guys right ever now. hear that theory? Yeah, that, you guys, ever, you, you guys know what it looks like when you drop a mic? Oh, yeah. How would you feel oh. if she showed up in Fantastic Beasts? Um, I wouldn't like it. No. I just think that the idea... I would love it, because as much as I'm not a huge fan of Mary Poppins, uh, that movie, Fantastic Beasts, needs some sort of fresh injection. <laughs> Thank of you, life. Wild Thank Mark. You. Thank you. I need to you're stay awake it. during right, that you're movie. You're going to get it, because you, you're real, uh, this is the main thing with that movie. Um, the first movie, again, which I liked very much, the biggest problem is it didn't have a lot of connections to... I mean, granted, it was in the wizarding world, but it didn't really connect... To Harry I Potter. didn't need connections. I just needed life. I needed no, I, buoyancy. I, 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 I needed it, fun. I, I think it had all. I think it had all that. Yeah, and from Dan Fogler. He yeah, was the best part that. of Fantastic Beasts. No, you just don't is like. There a, is there a bread store on Diagon Alley called Fantastic Yeast and where to find Diagon. them? Uh, no? Diagon. No, it's actually Sean a doctor. Shamaroni. A gynecologist. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Thank you here, so much. You're here all week. I'll but be at the Los Globos Theater Friday, <laughs> October 26th. Um, oh. Anyway, the Miss Mary Poppins trailer comes out. People are excited about it. I think that movie's going to crush it. Is that there is no Star yes. Wars coming out in December. That is the movie Disney is looking forward to pushing. They have three movies left for the remainder of the year, Nut which is Cracker. The Nutcracker. Is anyone going to see Nutcracker? I don't I want care it. at all about it. I know. It. It's weird. I, I don't, yeah. Will you take me to something? I can't get the Disney invite. I have really? cared yeah. less yeah. about very few things other than that not I just movie. do not care. Yeah. Okay. I know it's weird that a lot of people don't want... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but it's like what say you Nutcracker man the, the Nutcracker like my, my daughter sees the trailers for it and wants to see it and like, I was supposed to go I have to miss the screening and I was like it's for kids you know you know the problem with it is it looks a lot like Alice in Wonderland 
And I don't need to go back to Wonderland <laughs> at all ever again. Mixed with Chronicles of Narnia, I think. I yeah. Love that, Wonderland. But I do think that Mary Poppins Returns is going to crush, demolish well, in the box. It's office. not going to be. It's going to be the out of the three Ooh. movies that they come are coming in. The first one, or the least amount, is going to be Nutcracker. Right. We all agree there. Right. Second least will be Mary Poppins. Mm -hmm. Wreck-It Ralph takes the show. Yeah. Wreck-It Ralph's going to crush yeah. Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah, so Let yeah. me ask you a question. Do you think that Mary Poppins will do more than Beauty and the Beast opening weekend? No. You slipped no into an accent there with Mary Poppins. Mary yeah. Poppins. Uh, I told nice. you, keep saying No way. But Beauty and the Beast no. is like 180. I, yeah. I, 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 think that, I think the... <laughs> Sorry to take your question and run in a different yeah. direction. Well, Mark? That's, a, that's the basis of this entire show. Yes. My question is, does Mary Poppins or Aquaman, who's going to have the bigger opening weekend? If Mary Aquaman. Poppins. Aquaman. If it's not Aquaman, it's not a good sign. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think I, it's Aquaman. I think Mary Poppins could do triple figures, man. Me too. That's a Christmas movie. I'm Families, all that stuff. Families. Mom's going, oh, when I was so a child, crowded. I watched Mary Poppins, and we went to the theater together as a family. We should do that as well this holiday season. 70, 70, 75. 102. Which one are you saying 70, Mary 75? Poppins. Oh. Yeah, I think Roka, just Roka thinks Aquaman's going to do 200. I just think ah! there's so yeah, many. There's I'm Bumblebee, just, there's, there's Aquaman. There's so many movies in theaters that I think that audiences on Christmas will go see this, 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 this. Mary Poppins maybe like 80. Yeah. All right. We got to get the we got to get the date though because I th that, that's my one pet peeve about like these holiday movies coming out is that it's never on like a Friday through Sunday so it's so hard to judge right. like what the actual opening weekend was so Christmas is December 25th it's a Tuesday so do Christians do that what go to the movies oh on yeah Christmas? I saw a Titanic with my yeah. family and I went to the Jack came with us is on Christmas Day. Jack Hind who works here no now? Jack oh. String Cheese Jack oh. came uh, came with the with the Ellis family all saw Titanic do you hear they're doing oh. another Titanic run that's not true yeah. not, not oh, like the, the actual movie. boat oh, okay. no yeah, yeah. no oh, the, what? they're calling the it Titanic two, 2 and it's gonna sail the safe. same route that the first Titanic was going to take. Right. Well, it's a lot There's easier. A if it, well, if like it crashes that. this time, you just get a. a it ain't going to crash because global warming. That's well, what's going to prove to everybody plane, that climate plane, change is real. Well, this time a plane can pick everybody up. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to go to break. There it is. When we come back, the former UFC welterweight champion of the world, Matt Serra, will be calling in to the show. We're going to talk to him about everything from the UFC to his taste in movies and to. If he still thinks Mark Riley is a female, when we get back. <laughs> No, it's not late to the party. That's actually from Obi-Wan Kenobi. You didn't know that? Well, you should, and now you do. Jedi Council, what is it? It's about Star Wars, obviously. It's Jedi Council. Every week, the latest and greatest in Star Wars movie news, myself and Ken Knapsack, that's right, the pit boss himself, we have a guest on, and we talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars. If it's the movie news, the TV news, canon news, comic books, games, and then we take questions from you guys on Facebook and Twitter. It's a lot of fun. We've been doing it for a couple of years now. I'm still excited talking about it. The fan base is coming together again. I believe it is. I think it is. I hope it is. And we're talking Star Wars, so we like you. That's right. Right. All of you, if you're not a fan of Star Wars, come on over and join us every Thursday for Collider Jedi Council here on Collider Video. And we have an Apple Podcast feed or Podcast One, wherever you want to go if you listen to podcasts. And not only do you get Collider Jedi Council every week on Thursday, The Rule of Two with Mark Fernandez and Mark Riley, that's on every week. I believe it drops on Wednesday. It's on one of these days. It's a good show. You should listen to it. I like it. I listen to it. I haven't listened to it once. Hey everyone, Mark Ellis here. You know, when I'm not trying to clone dinosaurs or drinking in my neighborhood watering hole, I am probably hosting Collider Movie Talk. It's a flagship show here at Collider. I like to say that because I'm the host of it. It's every day, almost. It's four days a week, which is still pretty good, above 50%. You can watch it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. 4 p.m. Los Angeles time is when we do it. It's live, so you can participate in the live chat room. Go ahead and give us your thoughts on every story we have coming, because it's all the latest movie news of the day. Who did what at the box office? What horrible red box movies Bruce Willis signed on to? The DC, the Marvel, the Star Wars, the Lord of the Rings. Are they making new? I think they're, they, it's a TV show, and we still might talk about it anyway, because we love movies around here. It's myself and an expert 
expert panel of guests, including John Roca, Perry Nemiroff, Jeff Snyder, and other noted noters of note. You guys are going to love this show. And then we take your live Twitter questions at the end of the show at Collider Video. You can always use the hashtag Collider Movie Talk to get in touch with us. So subscribe right here to Collider Video. Check out Movie Talk and check out the Collider Movie Talk podcast feed. We have a podcast feed now. You don't have to look at this handsomeness. You can just listen to it, whether you're driving to work, whether you're driving from work, or you don't have a job, but you have a basement and ears. You can listen to Collider Movie Talks feed. You can get it at Apple Podcasts or on iTunes. You also get Mailbag. That's the show that's hosted by Perry Nemeroff a lot more professionally than I run this pirate ship. That's our weekend show where she takes your letters. I don't know if you write them or you email them. You have to ask her. And Afterthoughts, hosted by Ryan Snelling and Jay Williams. I almost said Ryan Williams and Jay Snelling. Would anybody have known the difference? I certainly would. I would have felt bad about it because I'm a nice person, and that's why I host Collider Movie Talk. Check it out in video form or on our podcast feed. Hi there. I see that you're enjoying Collider Live. After this show, why not check out Collider Games, where we play, well, games. We review games. We talk about things, anything that's going on in the gaming world, our opinions, news, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. If you like it, stick around and subscribe. Hey everyone, John Roca here, one of the hosts for Collider Sports Time. That's our new show there on the Collider Sports Network. It's our flagship show, just like Collider Movie Talk. We get on, talk about a bunch of sports issues of the day and what is burning up social media. What topics are burning up social media? That's what we do on Collider Sports Time. I'm joined by my top 10 co-host, Matt Nost. Me and him, we welcome a bevy of guests every week to talk about NFL the Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, and the NBA, which is starting up soon. We're going to talk about that. We also get into UFC stuff, college football, all the stuff that's happening in the world of sports. We're going to cover it on Collider Sports Time. And we're going to take the time to break it all down and give our opinions and our unique takes and unfiltered thoughts on what we think about the sports news of the day. So don't forget to join us every week on Monday for the Collider Sports Time show on the Collider Sports Network. And don't forget to subscribe on the Collider Sports Network on YouTube and on the Collider Sports podcast feed. We're going to bring you all kinds of stuff. Hope to hear from you soon. Hey, everyone. I'm Scott Movie Manson. Just to let you know, if you already don't, every Friday here on Collider Video, I host a weekly film review series called Movie Review Talk. The title says it all. Every week, I'm joined by two guest critics of my choice, and they're never the same. We review the new films. We pick something that's streaming that you might not know about, but is really great. And we pick a Blu-ray for something that you might have missed in theaters. It is fun. It is infectious. It is the Citizen Kane of movie review shows, and it's only right here on Collider with this guy, Scott Movie Mance, Mr. Movie Release Day himself check it out every friday at 10 a.m pacific only on collider video all right guys we are back collider live it is tuesday and thank you to mark ellis for joining us on the air talking a whole bunch of shit and we have makuga and roxy and riley but we are very excited because joining us on the phone right now he is the former UFC welterweight champion of the world, and we'll find out if he thinks Riley's still a girl. It's Matt Serra. <laughs> Woo! Yes. Yo, thank you. Oh, no, please. Stop cla- oh, you stopped clapping already? <laughs> yeah. oh, I got it. I got it. I got it. I didn't expect a bigger uh, uh, you know, introduction. That was great. What's up, gang? What's Matt up? Sarah, I'm so man. excited. I'm so excited. Well, I know, which is crazy because, you know, it's funny. I listened to the follow-up episode of your show um, with, with Jim Norton, which you affectionately called Jimmy. And, um, nice. and Not my voice? Yeah, it was kind of. I'm trying, I'm trying to do the best I can, but uh, but I was I was watching it. And, and I was just, I was listening yeah. to it, and you guys were and you were talking about you know the show and and Collider and that you you wanted to be on, on the show and talk the geek stuff and I was like man let's let's do it so you and I shot the shit we talked about it and, and here you are my brother how you doing? Let me tell you I'm so excited no I'm a uh, an avid uh, a, a watcher I watch I watch all I watch the Jedi Council stuff I am all about. Not just fighting the cage. I love superheroes and comic books and all the movies. I am a man child to the fullest. <laughs> I just love it all. I love it all. Well, that's why I love the show, because 
you guys are very passionate about geeky shit. Right. Oh, can I curse? Of yeah. course, yeah, of course. It's a perfect show for you, trust oh, me. Oh, listen to me. Don't, don't give me the green light with that. You'll regret it. <laughs> no, you, yeah, you, but, tell me. No, listen, I love your shows, and uh, I heard what happened was... I think it was on the Jedi Council. Was, I don't forget what it was. But you, uh, Christian, you mentioned that you won some money off my fight. Yeah. No? And that's how I knew. That's why I reached out to you that I was alive. I, 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 I watched the show. Well, yeah. So let me. So I was going to tell you about that. So it was actually on this show. It was on Collider Live. And we were talking about the Khabib fight. And I was talking about, like, so before I was married, um, I was U, the UFC and MMA. I was. I was making. I, that's how I was. I was paying my bills. Was I was betting on fights because back in the day, yeah, because back in the day, in like in well, back in the day, like but when it really started to pop, like in when uh, when Ultimate Fighter season one came out and Bonner and Griffin, you know, really put that put on that yeah, that show. That was a great fight. Yeah. But I started because I was a big boxing guy for a long time, and so when I started watching MMA, I was like, kind of, I, I said, this is it. This is the new thing, and and the odds in MMA were so. Great because you, there was so in boxing it's one it's it's basically it's one skill as far as you, if, if Floyd Mayweather is going up against a lesser skilled boxer nine out of ten times he's going to win that fight or ten out of ten when it's the case of Floyd yeah. Mayweather with MMA if someone's got the better wrestling or the better striking you didn't know where it went and and Vegas hadn't picked up on that mm -hmm. and when I when I and I watched your entire season and I responded to you right away because we're both from we're both from <laughs> New York you're like every uh, every kid I went to high school with. And but I like yeah. but I liked what you did though, man. I liked your I liked the way that oh, you thanks. you were a teacher. You you were a teacher, and I was rooting for you. And I think you were like seven to one odds or something fucking crazy. And nah, I was like twelve to one. Something, oh, man. Yeah. Take the... And that's not really when they say the biggest upset. It's like it's kind of a compliment, but at the same time, not really because at the time everybody thought I was going to get my ass kicked. So it's like <laughs> yeah. it's like all right, you know, I got the the biggest upset, but at the time. I remember people I liked were even like uh, was scared for me because you know George is a stud, right? You know, and I was known as a jujitsu guy. So if you look at it, they thought I'd have to get the fight to the floor. He's the better wrestler, but you know I I, I got some power in my hands. You did. But you I'm did. Like Wolver, I'm like I'm like the way Wolverine should have been. <laughs> Listen, hey guys, let's get this back to what the audience say. Some people watch the MMA, some people don't, but I can get right into some. Uh, Oh, I want to talk. We got. Yeah, we, Let's just talk about. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. No, we got. Look, we. You leave this shit. Well, this, I want to talk about Wolverine. For a we're gonna talk about all. We're gonna. Wolverine should not be you, fucking Jack. <laughs> <laughs> you Fuck you got. Listen to me. Yeah. As somebody that's walking around five six. We need a hero too. I can't just be the hero for everybody under five seven. You, Jackman, is awesome. It, it, and Brian Singer, to his credit, in the first X Men. He kind of shot it from some angles where he looked stockier than he really is. Right. All of a sudden, Wolverine Origins, he's walking around like fucking Clint Eastwood. Get out of here. <laughs> with shit. Are you? I, he's supposed to be a runt. Yeah. To be a short little run. Oh, well, I think they kind of redefined it once. Once they, I, yeah, that was one of the biggest things because for a long time it was like Mel Gibson was rumored for like all all this yeah. stuff of what was going to happen. Danny DeVito, yeah. Yeah. Danny DeVito, but like all this, all these uh, different actors were rumored for. And then Hugh Jackman, who nobody knew, yeah, he was taller, but he he just kind of embodied this new version of Wolverine. But not, you're right though, Matt, not not the guy that we knew in the comics, and might and they might because now that Disney. Is is gonna get a hold of the X Men? We might see a new no. version of. So, are you gonna audition for Wolverine or what? Oh, absolutely not. No. <laughs> because I, I I care for the character too much. I wouldn't yeah. do that to, to everybody. Right. But listen, um, let me tell you, I am I, I I am very interested to see if they recast it, which I feel they should. Um, I, I enjoyed some of those X Men movies, but it didn't feel like it was like my X Men. Yeah, I grew up with like. Yeah. I, like like uh, what was it the mutant massacre like X Men when like um, Wolverine was like kind of like the anti hero he was still yeah. like still pretty gritty he was like uh, you know right well, I don't know I don't want to be that guy I'm kind of old listen I'm 44 well, no, so you... I'm like I kind of like be that guy to say look I liked him before he was cool right. you know what I mean did you like him but, in Logan uh, what about Logan though I thought he probably hit oh no I I, I listen I loved Logan yeah. I loved Logan um, but again I just I'm not. Just, I know you're saying it because you're listen. You're like, all right, the dude's five six and he really wants a short guy. I just feel you got to give us that. Give us like, I want to see what Marvel does with it because they're so faithful to like they get it so right with everything. Right. Like they just, you know what I mean? From Iron Man to I mean, look, Guardians of the Galaxy. Who the 
who the hell knew who, that, who they were? Right. For the, the real diehard nerds. And I love the God. That's one of my favorite movies, the first one. And I really enjoyed the second one. I know some of you guys are mixed on that. I enjoyed the second one a lot too. I so, did too. I mean, they, they they just get it so right, you know. So I would love to see what they do with the X Men. I would love to see what they do with that. Yeah. Hey, Matt. Josh McCuga here, big fan. Uh, Thank what you, bro. what do you think of uh, Scott Eastwood as Wolverine? That name's been thrown around a lot. He's kind of a shorterish dude. He's like five nine. Is that too? Is that still too tall? You're funny. <laughs> For a guy five six, it is. <laughs> um, I don't know, man. It's, it's weird. Everybody's got uh, I I don't know. I mean, I don't listen. How about this? I thought Brian Singer in the first X Men again. Wolverine, Wolverine. If you look at that, the way they shot it, the way his angles, he didn't really look like the. He, he looked shorter. I, he yeah. did it. It wasn't like he's walking around now where they just. They just don't even give a shit anymore. Like, and don't get me wrong, I do love Hugh Jackman. I, he's you want to see something new, though. You want to see? Not my, yeah. Yeah, he's not my Wolverine. Yeah, I he's see. Not I see what you're saying. I mean, he's not, not my Wolverine. Wolverine's like a hard. It's kind of rough that he's. He's like. It's kind of hard for him to be a leading man because he wasn't the most attractive. Scott Summers was more of the dreamy dude, or whatever you want to call it. He was more that rugged bad boy, right. short, airy. Right. Whatever. Yeah, well, I, that's how I felt. Well, yeah, I mean, and, and who knows what's going to happen once we get to uh, once we get to the MCU version of it as possible. But you uh, know, the man, casting call goes out, and it's like, hey, any of your agents got any short, hairy guys we can put in at Wolverine? <laughs> it comes straight from Matt Sarah's mouth. Yeah, I hey. love how opinionated you are on the Marvel movies. I can only imagine how you're feeling about the DC universe right now. Uh, what have you liked any of the DC movies in the last couple of years? You know, I'm not that I'm not that hard a critic. Like I enjoy Justice League. I really did. Um do I love it? Is it a classic? No, but man, that flashback scene when the Green Lantern dude was in there wiping people out and then Steppenwolf kills him and the ring comes flying. I like certain scenes in that. Well, awesome. Uh the beginning when how, how you see Bat when the, when the um the the, the uh, what is it the cat burglar was like why would I say cat burglar the the the, the, the burglar guy was uh in, in the, on the roof and you first oh, right. see Batman in the background like the there's certain shots that just stay with you that are just amazing but they just do not get it quite right like like Marvel does they just don't I don't I don't know how Marvel has it gets it so makes a good point so well, well we were talking about it before I'm sorry, no we're just saying we were talking about it before it's just the thing with Marvel has done is just they've serialized it so now you have like it's almost because I know you're a big Game of Thrones guy too and like it's like it's Love like it. yeah like you tune in every week to find out what's going to happen next and that's what you were doing with Marvel is you tune into each movie to find out what's going to happen next and DC's working on that they just haven't hit it yet um, and I think that that's why Marvel has been so successful because now everybody's on the edge of their seat waiting for Avengers Infinity War Part 2, you know? And to put it in UFC terms, it's like Marvel went in with a fight plan, DCE went in like me, I was like, I'm gonna throw fists and kick nuts! And they're like, you can't do that, you can't kick them in the nuts, dude. You can't, yeah. it's not and love. That's it. you, yeah. know, you know, I thought about, like, <laughs> last night, you know, so are you, I mean, I know that you're a bit, you're into the geek stuff, I know you're into Star Wars and, and, uh, and Marvel and DC and all that stuff too, but are you, do you get excited come like Oscar season, like around this time with all the other movies? Oh no! I could I couldn't give a shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Sorry. I, yeah, it's all right. I, I don't care about any. I I don't care about any of that. I just like to be entertained. That's totally and, uh, cool. I, can't, like, I mean, it's nice if you know somebody gets it from you know like. Uh, like if Winter Soldier back when that that's an amazing movie. Yeah. If that would have got something, I mean, you know, there was some great acting in that. You yeah. know what I mean? That yeah, was yeah. a Great movie. Well, I went. You know, the reason so I like, asked, I asked because I saw Bohemian Rhapsody yeah. last night, which is you know the story of Queen. Oh and, man, I love I love Queen. Dude, you know what it was I funny? Was I, I started. Yeah, I loved it. And you know the thing is, I was looking at footage, and I don't know if people have said this before too, but doesn't Freddie Mercury remind you of a gay Dan Severn? Oh, hundred percent. As a matter of fact, you know, you know. You know you know who said that was Tank Abbott. Tank oh, did Abbott he? actually said that. After, okay. Yeah, after he lost to um to uh, to Don Fry, he said he um felt like he was you know he said it's a little too graphic, but he mentioned that he was that that Freddie Mercury was on top of him. Oh right. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I'll just 
leave it at that. Okay, but, that's uh, fair. That's fair. Yeah, man, that that is. He does look like him. It's amazing. Yeah, so. yeah. So, the, but the movie's good. You should check it out. But going back to, um, you know, it's funny because when you and I spoke on the phone, I talked to you because I've been a fan of uh, Jim Norton for a very long time, and and hearing his take on Star Wars, it's so funny hearing the casual fan who doesn't know all the shit that we know, you know, and it's like you just assume everybody does. Where he he thought oh, he yeah. he blames he blames George Lucas for the holiday special, and George Lucas hated that special. <laughs> He said that's all him. He no, that's that's what George Lucas is to him. He that's he says he stinks. <laughs> and I don't, hey, listen, how could the guy stink? I lo- the original trilogy. I said to me, of course, I grew up with it, mm-hmm. and I just I love it. I don't like when he went back and he did those retakes. It was just horrible. We don't, I mean, that's been played to death. Everybody knows. I mean, I don't, there's no reason to mess with it. You know. What about the new and movies? Then, uh, do you, you know, like the, do you I, like the new ones? How about this? Like, there's parts in it. Like, I enjoy. Like, I enjoyed um, Obi Wan. Um, I'm sorry. He's so what? What, what's uh, what's his name? I'm sorry. Which one? So, uh, who? Obi Wan. Oh, you and McGregor. Oh. Yes, I love him as Obi Wan. Yeah. And in the first, uh, the Phantom Menace, I did not. The only the what I loved, what what saved it for me, what I enjoyed, and I'm sure you didn't. Hear, you heard this before is. Uh, the scene at the end with Darth Maul, the fight scene, and yeah. I just like the way the music was. For sure, that. it just was. It, uh, dun, dun, it was just dun, done dun. so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know? Oh, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, listen, what doesn't hold water with me is what's up with the he had the he had the higher ground. How does that? How no. in the Revenge of the Sith when Obi Wan was like, hey, listen, you know, <laughs> and again, don't be silly. I got he didn't say it like this. I'm, right. I'm paraphrasing. Right. But he just basically like, look, I got the higher ground. Don't be silly. You jump up. You're gonna cut your fucking legs off. <laughs> but now, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Obi Wan's hanging on. Oh, Darth Maul's kind of after one of them, right. flicking the thing, flicking what? Oh, I'll mess with you now. And also, he's also now he senses. You see, Darth Maul's stuff. He looks like he's up to something. You right. See, right before the, the slowest jump over his head. What the fuck happened to his reflexes? <laughs> Why is he watching Obi Wan jump over his fucking head and cut him in half? Right, it's the truth. I'm sorry, guys. I'm no, sorry. No, no, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just came from my jujitsu school. I was practicing my Ashikarami. I apologize. No, it's all right. You I mean, sound like me watching this kind of stuff where, that, where I'm like, come on! Honestly, right, no, it's the truth. It bothers me, man. And, and he, he really. And, and let me ask you this really quick, guys. Yeah. Uh, it's been on my mind. When I watch the show, I want to ask you guys. The casual fan, I liked, I enjoyed. I enjoyed solo. the uh, uh, the mm-hmm. solo movie. I enjoyed it. So did I. I enjoyed. I enjoyed that. I liked Woody. I love Woody Harrelson pretty much in everything. I liked him as uh, Beckett. Yeah. I liked him. I liked that little crew, even though they got taken out early. I liked it. I liked the little monkey guy with the arms. <laughs> I liked it. I enjoyed that. I loved it. I liked the way his girl had to sacrifice herself. Like you could just picture them on different adventures. It was cool, you know. Right. Yeah. But what I did, what what kind of bothered me was that. And how does a casual fan, like, let's say they're not reading the books or they're not watching Clone Wars right. and all this stuff, how do they know? When they see Darth Maul at the end, right? like, I'm going, I'm, I knew that he was alive from one of the other stuff, but somebody's going, wait, hold on, wait, hold on. They go, well, didn't that mother effort just get cut in half? Right. Well, I <laughs> think, Did he just get cut in half? Well, I think the answer, he back? well, I think because that's, the thing is, too, because you, you, you started with, you know, I, Clone Wars, and, because eventually you found that out because you asked the questions, right? You said like, I think that's kind of what they were going for. What they wanted, what I always thought, what the smart thing for them to do is, if you want people to go back and either know about it or watch it or even t- to learn about it, even if it's a casual fan, that the goal, what you want to try to do is ask that exact question. So what you did after you left, you're like, what? I thought that fuck got, got cut in half. How, what happened? And then someone tells you, well, no, actually in Clone Wars, they, they continue it all. And now you know it. Now whether or not you watch it or not, who knows, but, you, but you're aware of it. So someone will, you'll ask the question and more people be, will be aware of the series now. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a, a, a fishing hook. You know, it's like, it's like that way I, I, th- I throw it out there. I, yeah. No, I get it, <laughs> but it is, it's it's kind of a new thing. It's like, confusing. Like then I yeah, it is a little confusing. But don't get me wrong, it's still money. And now what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen now? Because they're probably not gonna greenlight another solo because I heard it didn't do great. And now what are we gonna do now? Now they go, oh, the Darth Maul's back. I know he's not. We're not gonna do a sequel. Right. What the hell's gonna happen? Well, I think that people are probably just people were gonna forget about it for the most part because what they're gonna do is so I don't know how That's much. Pathetic. 
You know, I don't know how. I agree. I'm, I I think that they should have given it a, a full trilogy. Well, it just didn't. It, it just didn't make enough money. And the thing is, too, people weren't responding to it. It was also marketed terribly. But yeah. the, the big thing is, um, what I believe is going to happen. It hasn't been announced yet. The two things. The first thing is the Benioff and Weiss, uh, who are you know cr- the, the co-creator of the, the television show of Game of Thrones, are um, involved in a series of films for Star Wars. And they have not announced what it's going to be. I'm convinced that it's going to be the the beginning or the start of the Jedi and the Sith from years back because that's what the Game of Thrones guys are good at. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a brand new way to bring in new audience, not confuse people. That's that's, that's one thing. That's your guess, Christian. That's my or, guess. It's a guess. You've heard something. No, 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 no. It's a guess. And the other thing is the Mandalorian, um, which is this. Have you, Matt? Have you have you kept up at all on on what's going on with the Mandalorian show? Yeah, I know that uh, John Favreau is going to be. Uh, it's his. It's his thing, right? Is he producing it? Or yeah, he's the showrunner. He's the showrunner, so the producer, and he's going to. He's going to be. He, he he hasn't actually been announced to direct any of them. Right. But Dave Filoni has. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard has. There's there's a lot of people who've already been announced to direct, and it'll be on that Disney streaming service come uh, next year sometime. Man, and they don't know anything about the Mandalorian. It could be a. A guy, a girl, it could be anybody. We know? have no idea. Who's in that armor? Nobody knows. The rumor, the rumor is that it's Pedro Pascal from Game of Thrones. You know the uh, the Viper, who got his eyes popped oh, out. Yeah. Come on, I, I, I that dude is great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's that's a possibility. Does it does a television show inside of Star Wars? I mean, in, in in the Game of Thrones style, does that excite you at all, or or do you rather them stick to movies? Oh. No. The, the, hey, man, the more the better, as long as it's quality. You right. know. And if you got guys like John Favreau who basically could be credited to for bringing this Marvel universe to life with Iron Man. Yeah. Who's calling me? Let me call me end this place. How do I end this? Do you hear that beeping? They're bringing no. it. You know, I got ADD, Christian. <laughs> As do All I. Right. We're good. But anyway, but yeah, John Favreau is just, you know, I hold that guy in high regard. Yeah. Back from swingers, you know what I mean? Yeah. I love that dude. So I'm sure he's not going to put out. As I'm saying this, I'm thinking of Cowboys and Aliens. I might have to hold on a second. Yeah. That might be right. Yeah, I might, he did fucking produce that thing, didn't he? Yeah, but he directed that thing. But I think I think that's different. That's different. Also, I think this is something he's he's had a passion I know, for. I know. This. I'm not being a, I'm not being a downer. I'm no, not, no, I'm no. You're you're downer. right to think it. I mean, it's definitely you got to look at past yeah. body of work, sure. But I mean, I think that he's I think that he's really locked into this one for sure. But oh, no, well, you, but wasn't Cowboys and Aliens based on a true story? That's like that was like old west aliens came, right? <laughs> no, it's a different. That's oh, a, it's different. different. No, that's that's different. my bad. Yeah, yeah. My bad. My yeah. bad. My bad. Um, Does this sell you on getting the Disney service? Just that. Alone? Alone, will that make you get it? Uh, I'm gonna say if there's, I might wait to hear if there's good reviews, like <laughs> yeah. you know, because I heard about the new DC service with the Titans yeah, and yeah, yeah. that, and I don't think uh, were well, you guys weren't too up on it or not to switch gears, but because I was thinking about getting that, yeah, and then I would say I heard no, it's not that great. Yeah, no, it's you know, it's not that great I mean, so far. Yeah, I'm a Netflix guy. I can get away <laughs> with that, and you know what I mean. If, yeah. you know, but. You know, I could see with Disney, with the with the Star Wars, if it's a quality show, yeah, I would get it for that. Right. Like if it's like Matt. a game of like Thrones quality, I'm getting that for sure. Matt, but you're a you're a huge Marvel fan. They're also doing a like a yeah. Loki TV show that's going to have Scarlet Tom Witch. and Scarlet Witch. So like Tom Hiddleston is going to reprise his role as Loki in the oh. streaming service. So you're getting the Mandalorian and a Loki show. Hmm. Yeah. But would that change your mind no, now? I, I, no, no, I'm in. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. got me. You got me yeah, with the there Loki. It is. You threw in Loki. I didn't know. But listen, I'm gonna. I'd most likely get it. But what is, do, do, does anybody even know? How much is he even going to be going for? Not yet. Like no, that? they haven't announced yet. They're going to, you know, you're going to have their entire library. I mean, I, I know you've got kids. I got kids, so it's going to be. There's going to be gotcha. tons of the old stuff that you can access. All the old movies, new live action movies that they're going to be doing. They're doing Lady and the Tramp live action, Lilo and Stitch live action. They're doing all these things, all the old catalogs. So it's just going to be. They're going to load you up to really sell you on it. I don't know how much they're going to they're going to charge. DC's eighty dollars a year, so we know more than that. Yeah, it'll be eight, more than eighty a year for sure. Um, but you know, Matt, because I know only have you for like another uh, eight minutes here. I wanted to, I do want to, I want to shift back into the MMA world for a second because I wanted to ask you, it is kind of combining the two, because obviously you are, you're a big uh, movie head and and you, when you're, when you're fighting or when you're not fighting, when you're around, are there any other guys that you can shoot the shit with about this type of stuff? Are you, you kind of like uh, Neo to where you're like really the only one? Yeah. No, no, no. This is, uh, there's a lot of guys that like, I'm going to say, that like the comic books. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, I'm trying to think of anybody 
some, there's a young kid on the alpha male. Um, shit, man, I'm going to get his name right after this. But there's, uh, there's, there's, oh, Ben Saunders, Killer B. He's, okay. Oh, me and that guy, we talk, we talk uh, X-Men all day long. He used to like the cartoon show from the 90s. Okay. Oh, that he was, was a on great cartoon. Yeah. The Ultimate Fighter. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah, he loved that. So, yeah, Ben Saunders, yeah, I'm, I'm sure he watches uh, Collider, too. Oh, so. cool. He's a big fan. Yeah, that's another the, big fan. So. That's awesome. And also, a huge fan was uh, Joe Silver, who was the old matchmaker. He matched, He just recently retired from the matchmaking. Yeah. But he's been the matchmaker from UFC 1. So, Holy cow. Uh, from, uh, not from 1, I'm sorry. From when Zufa took over. Oh, yeah, sure. So he's been around forever. And uh, he's the been... guy was the biggest 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 fan and that dude's shorter than me so that's another <laughs> guy who was uh peeved about <laughs> you jackman he, I, he was more open arms about it than me i think the shorter the guy the more, more angry pissed the off guy. yeah sure and the, <laughs> the, the exactly. other, yeah the other thing i told you i was going to say for air um when we talked on the phone was that uh i got a chance to see you fight live um and it was on the undercard of uh Rashad Evans and and Machida, and it was when you fought Matt Hughes and i uh, and oh, yeah, man. I, you you won that fight man you won that fight. Yeah, right. I told you to save that for air. I'm yeah. only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, if you thought I lost, I would have been like, all right, yeah, don't mention that. No, no, oh, I did. Thanks, Trish. It did. It thanks, just... man. I appreciate it. Did... I, you know what? I, I agree with you, but what are you going to do? Well, did you guys, uh, you, know... <laughs> you guys had like a little bit of, of, of beef during the season, obviously, too, and then it seemed like it was all patched up. Are you guys pretty cool now when you see each other? Yeah, you know, I don't know if you heard about what happened to Matt. He got hit by, uh, I mean, it sounds crazy. He was, he, you know, He's in the Midwest there. He got hit by a, his car got stuck on the tracks. He got hit by a train, you know. Oh shit! No, I didn't so know. he was he was he was in a coma. He was he's in bad shape. So he's he's back now. He's recovering and stuff. But you know he's got a road to recovery. Oh so. wow! I didn't yeah, we're all good. I wish that. Yeah, you know, when you got when you got bad blood with somebody and <clears throat> you get to literally just fight it out in a cage. You you, you know it's gone. you usually leave it yeah. in there. Yeah. And especially the way it ended with both of us. It's not like one dude just took an ass beating. Like you know what I mean? Like, no, it was just, a scrap. It was a pretty. It was a pretty, scrap. It was a close fight, regardless. Yeah. And uh, you know, we, we got respect for each other now. Well, did good. you but reach I do out? Appreciate your, uh, did you reach out Sorry. after the accident? A hundred percent. I put out something on my Instagram and Twitter, which I'm no longer on Twitter. But when I was, I put something. Out. Oh, okay. Um, too neg- Twitter's too negative for me. I can't. Do I, that. Listen, you, yeah. you're you're not wrong, man. Um, Okay, so last thing, one thing I do, like I said, I, I sent it to you, and I'll and I'll, I'll I want to get your opinion because we are coming to. I haven't made that announcement yet, but we're I, we're gonna be, we're gonna be in your area sooner than later, and I would love for you to be be around when when we are. But um, one of the things that um we do here, and like I was telling you about, it, is the and right after we we get off the phone, we have a movie trivia show that we've been doing here for like um four years now, and it's like it's it's intense. The people uh, they, they 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 train, they get there's it's it really is mental fighting, and we we have always the opening feels like UFC fight. It's like there's champions, there's rankings. I feel like if you ever watch this, you would be the perfect perfect analyst for this because it's it's there's inner geekdom stuff, there's Marvel movies, there's Star Wars stuff. It's it's stuff that I feel like to get your professional opinion with the fight game and stuff too. I'd love to hear what you think of the movie trivia showdown eventually. So um and and that way you can yeah, break man. it down. Um, will you please join us again uh, on the air? We can talk whatever yes. whatever the, the latest and greatest is going on in the world of movie news. Listen, it would be my honor. I'd love to be in studio and hang out with you guys. Yeah, I am one of you. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you are. Yeah. You can tell. You're no casual listen, fan, listen, man. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. Listen, not anybody's gonna try to throw you guys in a locker or anything. But I got your fucking back. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> I love it. I'm sorry, guys. You, you I knew have fun with you. No, it's all right. You guys are the best. And if you're ever in Long Island, you could uh, get some on lunch at me. I got two schools out here. You got any family in Queens still, Christian? I, uh, I have. I have family in in New York and in, in in Long Island. Actually, um, my my uncle and my aunt are out there. I'm gonna I'm gonna be there. I'm gonna be there for for Christmas time. I'll be there for Well, you got my cell. Listen, you got my cell. Hit me up, dude. You're getting some arm locks on me for sure. I would love that. <laughs> um, and then, all right, all right. So tell tell Jim, tell Jim, Jimmy about the uh, about the Christmas special, and then um, we'll, uh, yeah. we'll we'll talk soon, my dude, brother. Hey, listen, hey, 
Christian, you can jump in on the uh, UFC Unfiltered. Would we'll love it. Uh, the UFC official podcast with Jimmy Norton and myself. Jump in studio. Bring one of your uh, buddies with you, and it'll be a party the next time you're in, next time you're in town. I would love it because I have because that's the beauty of Clyder Live is that we don't we on this show it's two hours we talk about everything. So I would like to at, at some yeah. point maybe just have you call in and just talk MMA because I want to get your thoughts. I want to know who you think is the, the real, who do you think is the best fighter, the pound for pound right, pound for pound right now. Oh, what, as far as in the UFC? I yeah, think UFC. U- UFC. Who's pound for pound I mean, the, the best? Like, right now, like, Khabib is unbeaten right now. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's hard to argue when a guy's got no losses, you know? You right. Got, you got DC, who's a double champ, undefeated at heavyweight. But then there is that John Jones situation where he's only lost twice to the same guy. Right. Who might be the greatest to ever played the game? You, you know? think Cormier is going to keep the you title? Know? You think because Cormier is teased about keeping the light heavyweight championship if he lost the heavyweight? You think he'll do that? I'm, you know, I'm not sure. I know he's got Derek Lewis in front of him first, right? And uh, Derek Lewis hits like a truck, but I believe he will get past him. I believe I'll have okay. a fight with Brock Lesnar. Wow. And I'm not sure about that light heavyweight. You know. All right. Well, cool. Again, exciting though. It is exciting. It's super exciting, and it was exciting to have you on, Matt, the former UFC welterweight awesome. champion of the world, Matt Sarah, one of us, one of the geeks, and we're gonna have him on Fucking again. Love Thank him. you. Thank you, champ. Appreciate Thanks. it. You're the best. And we'll, Thanks for having me. It was an honor. Uh, Thanks, we'll do it. We'll Sarah do it again. At, uh, on uh, Instagram. Yes. Take care, gang. Thanks a lot, Matt. Bye, we'll talk Matt. to you soon. Bye, bye. bye. How fucking cool was that? Oh, it's the coolest. That's the best. Yeah. I, yeah. Chat, man, I, I loved him. I love, I love him. Yeah, he's yeah. The best. Roxy wrote, I love him. I, I love, love him. him. Because he's very he, cool. you know what would be an a, awesome dude. Because how appropriate is the name of his show, Unfiltered? Yeah. yeah. Because he does not know. Because no. he's he's raw, he's honest, he's got the heart of a lion, hence why he took the championship in the first place. Yeah. You he's know? knowledgeable too, though. Super knowledgeable. And he's and he's and that's the, if you look at it too, like it's and I think that MMA fighters, I think, have now kind of shed the. You know, with boxing for a long time, it's like people go, "Well, you want to fight? You box, you get your head all jumbled yeah. up." And MMA, a lot of MMA guys are still pretty fucking sharp because it's yeah. like because that's the why it's been so so much. It's safer than boxing. I said it for years. Is that there's so many different skills. You're not just right. for boxing, and I love boxing, but boxing for 12 rounds, right? Oh yeah, you're aiming for the head. For the body, for, for the, the body. most part, for the, for the most part, for the head, and in MMA, like he's talking about choking you out, getting the arm bar, mm-hmm. doing this. You, you you go for the knockout and stuff too, but it's not it's not the only aspect of the game. Right. And I think that that's what's ensured safety for a long time. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I, and also, we were talking about it last week is like when people try bad accents from places, right? Like when you do the boss, and you know. Yeah. The, if you want to know how to do a New York accent, just, just listen to, listen to Matt's yeah. Yeah. yeah, It's awesome. He, I'm telling you, he reminds me of yeah. every... St- he's yeah. all my friends from high school. Yeah. He sounds like, I knew it like immediately when I heard him talking. I was like, this is someone I hung out with like every day. Do when you I, think uh, after watching this, he knows that Riley is, is a man? I think so now. Yeah. I think so now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think he picked it up. Probably got to the when, bottom of it. When yeah. I officiated Jake Baldino's wedding, every one of his sound relatives like sound just like yeah. Matt Sarah. It's the yeah. best. Matt Sarah's the best. And I'm I will. i going to take him up on that offer. I'll probably grab a slice with him when I get back to... Oh, yeah. You got it. I will. Yeah, yeah. I will. Um, all right. Wow. So again, once again, make sure please go follow Matt Sarah on uh, on Instagram, and because he's very active on Instagram. So go follow him. Tell him that you found him from uh, Collider Live, and and uh, and show him some love because he's not on the on the twits as much as he said. So go to uh, go to Instagram, and uh, and thank you once again to the former UFC welterweight champion. Awesome. Um, we're not going to go to break. We're going to bring in. This is going to this is going to get electric. Oh here. man! Because before we do, let's let's wait first because I want to get your thoughts on oh, okay. the first two because sure. I, these two aren't going to let anybody talk. Yeah. Um, what are we doing? So, <laughs> what's well, this? Now? this uh, well, first of all, today. Horseman! First of all, today we have. Before we, no, let's not bring him in yet. First, first of all, today we have the match of corruption mm-hmm. versus the founding fathers, yeah. which is anarchy. And you got Mike Kalinowski and Chance Ellison against Dan and Roca. It's a big match. I yeah. hope they lose. Who? Who? Dan all and Roca. Them. All uh. of them. Okay. Well, because you got the odd <laughs> couple still in there. Mm-hmm. Um, well, if we so as that as that moves on. Um, and those guys trying to get their team championship. Roca has a huge match on Friday because he's going up against Bibiani for the title. Yeah. Now these two, when I hope you they look, lose too. Went back in the day when you were. I think you might have been doing the the. No, I think Emma was doing it. But it was so uh, Bibiani came in to the league and he had a perfect game by and, storm. And he looked and he looked incredible. I mean, the amount of knowledge that Bibiani has is incredible, right? Mm-hmm. We all know that. And Roca was it's forming, ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And Roca was forming the Horsemen at the time. Has Bibiani joined, and then they legit 
kayfabe and not did not see eye to eye. Right. They just did not see eye to eye. They were they uh, disagreed uh, fundamentally on how to approach the game in both aspects. So Could I you, missed that. Was it a feud on Twitter? Was it was. It, in... it was. It was on Twitter. Everywhere. It was on. It was on camera. And it, and and it looked like okay, finally Bibiani and Roker are gonna face each other, and it just never happened. It just every single time it looked like it was going to one of them would win, one of them would lose. Like JTE it, spoiled it a couple times. Something. Yeah. It just never whatever. happened. Yeah. So fast forward, Bibiani gets himself the title, and Roka wins his matches, and now we've got one of the biggest title matches of all time in Roka and and Bibiani, and it's going to be electric when these two win. Who do you got in this one? Man, this is this is pretty tough because five rounds. I feel like every time I think that I'm like, ah, Bibiani's got it, Bibiani's got it. He somehow chokes somewhere along the line. Right. Um, he just seems, I mean, legitimately he's so beast-like right now. He's, he's on, on a roll. roll. He's, he's on really fire on a roll. Right but I feel like John Roca, there's something about him right now. He's on a roll. He's really yeah. feeling it. He's got, he's, every time I talk to him, it's, he's got the confidence. He's got the swagger that maybe he didn't have a year, year but and a half Bibiani ago. But Bibiani and Roca's head? That's the thing. Is Bibiani... I don't know if Bibiani can get in there. I feel like I'm gonna Bibs, go has, Bibs has more, you're going Roca? Yeah. I feel like Bibs has more knowledge, but Roca plays the game, and that's something that you're talking about. He just, I, I think that he has it. But if you're just talking from a knowledge perspective, I, I would go Bibs. And then I, you're you biased here. I'm biased. Yeah. So you're yeah. Gonna, well, you want you want to see Roka do two time champ. I he'll do. Be the first, he'll be the third person to ever go two time champ with you and Dan. Yep. Um, and Bibs needs to get that defense. And that's another thing Bibs wants to do. Bibs wants to hold that defense over right. Roka because Roka never defended the title, and that's something that Bibs has always held over Roka. Yeah. So well, that, that's dangerous coming it in. It is. Well, you know. Do you get to say who you have, or you have to stay impartial? I'm gonna. I want to hear them out. I want to see. I want. <laughs> I want to hear what's gonna happen today. Swim some water. Let, let's. Let's. Okay. Get, I want to do that too. Without any further ado, let's bring in the movie trivia showdown. Champion of the world, do you William sit, the do you Beast. You're going to have Beast sit there. No, you guys are going to sit in the back. Okay. So shift. Roka will, sh will sit over here. There's Roka's walking in now first. Now you won't hear my fidget spinner anymore. No, it won't. So they're sitting down, and there's Bibbs. Bibbs is going to sit. And Here's what I would ask... Bibbsy. What I would ask is to try, because I've been in the room with you guys many times when we got here. Uh -huh. Don't yell over one another. Oh, that's half Let's the fun. Let us... Let us... I want to have the... I'm going to... Just find out. It's a perfect song to be playing. Some conversations here. It's upside down, those of you care. Oh, you know. Jesus Christ. All right. Brandon. New champion? Brandon. All right. So look, the movie trivia showdown champion of the world, William the Beast Bibiani, is here for now. The challenger, the number one contender. No, I'm sticking John, around the whole episode. The outlaw Roca. All right, Bibbs, let's Hi. start with you. You yes. are the champion. You, I am. You and Roca have been circling around this dance for over a year. Um, and now you get him. Now you get him. Now, um, how do you how do you prepare? Are you you've been on a roll this I season? Have. Are you prepared for this? Do you think uh, is this is this a scary opponent or, or is this is this is this easy peasy? You know, there's a there's a you, you say scary opponent and easy peasy as though those are the only two answers. Okay. I'm not scared of Roka. I think if Andrew Guy has proved everything is that he can be tackled. What I plan <laughs> to do is I plan to go in because here's the thing with me and Roka. All right? Oh, we hate each other. But we don't want to settle this, like, out in the alleyway, they live style. Right. <laughs> we want to see We want to see who actually knows the most about movie trivia. That might be right. quicker than five rounds. That would be very, very... I have a bad knee. That's over in a second. Right. It's mm. done. It's fine. I'll, I, I, if that was the case, I would give it to you. Right, yeah. As but it's it stands, a mental battle. Movie trivia. I think I can do it. All right. I think Roka is going to be a great opponent. I think he he you know it wouldn't there would be no point to a rivalry if he sucked. Yeah, John, so, yeah, it's yeah. true. And he's bring up the rivalry. This is. Yeah. I know how much from the get go. You and I have been friends for a long time. How much yeah. that thing means to you, and Damn how much right. you want it. And yeah. is there a little <laughs> sweet justice in being able to take him on for it? Oh, absolutely. Are you kidding? The biggest blowhard in the league. I would. I love this. I'm so excited to do it. Like I've been studying, focusing. As soon as he won that belt, I immediately was like, "Oh, I'm gonna take that off him." Yeah. Because there is no one that I've wanted to beat more in the league in such a long time than Bibiani because of how much he insulted the league when he first came into the league. How he would so? Sit on the sidelines. You invited me and into the league when I first came into the league. I didn't personally. 
funny, but and you he laughed. And he laughed. At, yeah, can I talk? Because you blow hard ass just got the talk. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> well, no, well, no, 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 on the side, the biggest heel on the side this day. Let's on talk. The side Let's line, talk. On the sideline, he laughed at the questions. He would scoff at people's uh-huh. answers. He would answer for them. He'd he'd giggle when they got it wrong. I watched it all happen. And he insult the questions, okay. thinking the game was below him, beneath him, and he didn't respect the game. And so when his ass went out in the first round tournament, choked like a dog. When he went out in the first round in the tag team tournament, choked like a dog. Right. All of a sudden, he found this new humility, this new humbleness. But and I worked. started to respect him again. Okay. Yes, because I I love the game so much. When you disrespect the game, you get my ire. It's ain't about heel or face. This is about respecting the what game. I, what I will say in defense of the champion yeah. is the fact that I didn't see a lot of that. No, because you were calling the matches. But what I will say, what I have seen from the champion is he is, and, and you do this as well, mm-hmm. he's an ambassador for the sport. He talks to sure. the, he talks to the fans all the time. Yep. He he really has carried the belt. He's proud of the belt. He asked him mm-hmm. to get coffee. He did. Yeah, he asked the fans to people get to get coffee. Uh, no, no, they, they offer. They, no, they offer. you but, asked. But he Everybody is, witnessed but it. But the game has, has, I know how much it means to you now. Is, is what he was saying in the beginning accurate, inaccurate? Uh, I was playing a character, right? You see, off was, camera, I sitting was, down. I, I had to stay in character, Daniel uh-huh. Day Lewis style. All right, if you were that if good, you're gonna, maybe. If, if, there you go. Right, I'm as good as Daniel Day Lewis. Thank no, you. So, you're not, not even close. So, look, look, look. This is a competition. We all have to put on uh, uh, a certain a certain amount of uh, a competitive. Right. Fire. So and so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure, sure. For for me, you know, the only thing that was my issue with this whole rivalry, um, you know, he didn't have a problem, you know, with with me and the way I was playing the game back when I was in his stable winning games for right. him. But as soon as that was the case, the the horse persons are there for for Roca. They're they're See, his This team. is a narrative not, he's created. Hold on, this let's is hear, let's the, hear the point. Well, look, look, you know, he, he, when you he, can't he win, builds, when you can't win, I want to create curses. You, you were right stable. before. Right, you both. Right. I want him to right, go right, and you to right, go. He, go built, he builds a stable, and then no one succeeds in that stable but him. He wins a championship. Everyone else, it collapses like a flan in a cupboard. He builds a new stable. What's the first thing that happened? Damn, especially reasons. in your cupboard. All right, uh, uh, you know the, his his. Uh, Inman loses the belt. Right. All right, we're looking at uh, some tournaments right now, and I'd be very surprised if his stablemates make it all the way to the end of this. Okay, we're looking at, you know, the Roca show. You should know about the choking in tournaments. I should know about choking yeah. in tournaments. That's why I'm speaking because I actually know what I'm talking that about. That you've blown it exactly. Yeah. So I know what it's like, and I can actually admit to it. Right. As opposed to so as we as we here. as we show here as we show here there's there is legit heat. I want to address this. You can you can, okay. but there is legit heat between you two yeah. because I think it's also the competitiveness. I know how competitive you are. I know how competitive you are. I know how much that means to you, and I know how much mm. you want that. So when and that's the funny thing when people realize though too. It's like this is going to be a heated battle. This is going to be something you both have something to prove. You yeah. want to prove you can win it. Yeah. You want to prove you can defend it, and you want to fight and put up the battle. So you, I'm gonna let you. To that, sure. please let him finish. We're very thought. uncomfortable back here. Do you want to leave? You, okay? yeah. you, know, you want to hold the belt against yeah, these yeah, trains? Yeah. Great weather we're having these yeah, Roxy, days. Yeah, Roxy, go ahead. Roxy, go ahead. Uh, do you guys find yourselves to be similar? That's a good yes. question. No. Why? This is why. This, it's like not yeah. even remotely close. Okay. Yeah. Well, you say you say yes, and you because. And, well, sure. I think uh, uh, Roca uh, defined the blowhard game in the Schmodown. I'm actually taking Sweetheart, cues I backed it up with from, titles. Yeah, so did he. So, yeah, there yeah. you go. You, you fluked your way into one, yeah. Yep. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm sorry, would you have I turned won it down? matches would to get have, to mine. Would you have turned it down? I won matches would you have to get to mine. Would you have I won it matches down? to get would to mine. Would you have turned it down yeah. under the circumstances You had rules created would for it, you to get there. Yeah. As opposed to Kalinowski coming up to you and said, you know all those rules about how you had to Now, but when I first contenders. won the belt, I beat the best exactly. and I went through the tournament. Okay. I didn't have rules created so that I could get a shot at hey, the listen, title. I Fool, hey. I won it legitimately. Okay. And you hated me because you're a cabal. You and your cabal, I you talk cabal? all kinds of crap about me offset, and I hear about it. I have a cabal? That's why I blocked you off the end. That's why I got into it because I got into your head. I blocked you. I talked about you because I heard all this crap you've been saying behind the scenes. All these people tell me the crap you were talking about me and about all the well, shit you were so, saying. Like, which, so which, I which, wanted which? to come after you. So I want to take that belt off you, man, because you don't respect the game. You don't respect the players in the game, and that frustrates yeah, the hell. Yeah, not similar. No. Cabal? Yeah, I, I would say I would say that they're pretty similar. I would say that they have a they have a very. I'd say like, I'm better. Uh, well, we're gonna find that out. We're gonna find that in a couple days. But like, I think I gotta be honest. I gotta be here. Here's my my when I'm looking at this right now. Yeah. 
I think he's approaching it pretty calm and, and coming after you saying this is this is how it's, I think he's get I think you I think you're getting fired up. Yeah, because you know what Connor does? Connor sells a match. That's what I'm doing. I'm selling I think the he's match. Selling the match too. Yeah, that's right. Like could be he's could be he's a, it, well I'm gonna be could be actually once this thing goes down All on right. Friday. That's for sure. But I can I, make up so, names too. You know he's he's, they're, he's they're actually real UF, people in MMA. UFC, oh UFC, UFC yeah, oh, actual real fights. Thank you. Okay, cool. They're not in movies, so yeah, real fights. Right. Listen, but here's the thing. He created this narrative of this horse, this horse person's. Like we went in, we rode the stupid wooden horses for him to help him because he loves those big entrances. Right. He needs the attention. He needs all the glamour. He needs it all, you know. But we did it all to try to help him. Didn't help. He blew it. He blew right. it. And Meyer then Burnett. They Meyer me. Burnett blew and they it. You. No, and they no, they you left. Me right you away. left. Not right away. You left. Not right we away. We tried to help you. You wouldn't listen. He says that you. I mean, when I talk <laughs> to him, he, well, he, he says he tried to abandon him. In the, in the, like there was no help. There was no support. I, every time um, we tried to talk, we tried to help him. I said, you got to do this, you got to do this. He wouldn't listen. No, 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 I'm going to do it my way. I will I say I want to create though. the growling commandos. I want to do the growl, growl. Didn't sell a shirt. When what you, you won that, and I know this footage, I've seen it, and the fans play it all the time. When you won that against Dan Merle in yeah. February, yeah. I did not see Matt Nose. I did not see Burnett. Matt wasn't there. I'm just saying. To be fair. I'm just there. saying. I didn't see Matt Nose. I didn't see Burnett. I didn't see, I know Riley and you were tight back then. I didn't see anyone. But we were tight. He was on my state. The only person I didn't, that I did see who congratulated you mm -hmm. was the man I was to my right. The guy who man. wanted to ride my coattails to the championship. He, yeah. he, you invited me. He, he I didn't wanted, know what the hell was going on. He wanted that attention. He came in. You know what he did? He hugged me. Then he turned around to the camera and made sure and went, yeah, me. Yeah, me. I thought and we were was, in a stable. It was a celebrity. You don't think it was, we're not in a stable? No, not we're not in a stable. I didn't believe it at all. And oh, when it happened wow. and I saw the replay, I was like, ah, something bothered me about okay. that. And as it progressed, so see, and like, again, like I said, he creates this horseman curse or this yeah. horseman thing, which the fans have now glammed on to yes. and created. Yeah, exactly. But the right. horseman, he created the horseman curse. To explain the fact that he choked. Well, he wanted to, oh, it's a curse. It wasn't my fault. It's a curse. Makuka, Own your Makuka shit. It looks like he's at Thanksgiving and the family uh, dinner has just exploded. Hi. Josh. Hi. Uh, what, <laughs> now I Let's ask you. Let's talk about politics. Now, before they came Shoot. in, before they came in, I said, I know that what this is going to turn into. Um, you yeah, hear this? this. Is we had We had impression. We had, we had, we were not impressions. We were taking in predictions of what was happening. Now, what do you think? You said you didn't think Roko was going to be affected by. There's a lot of heat in this room right now. There's a lot of heat. Legit heat. Match, so Legit heat. This is this is this is something. Man. Now listen, I picked Roka before I walked in the into the. Yeah, I did. Uh, I sit next to him every day, host many a show with him. Thank you, sir. I've seen the I've seen the tidal waves. I've seen the waves. I've seen the ups and downs. I've yeah. also seen being very intimidated by William Bibiani's first match because he he went out and but then I saw him lose to JTE, somebody that I've beaten. Uh, then I was also here for my first ever big event in the free, free for all, all. Like twenty two rounds. Yeah, it it's it was like oh, yeah. it was Drago training in four. Yeah. Uh, which, so, should, which shouldn't be laughed at, Roka. 22 rounds in a free-for-all. I'm not laughing okay. at it. I'm saying... Uh, I mean, I was exhausted standing there not answering yeah. questions. The fact that he stayed up there the whole time, his hands were black from uh, erasing whiteboards. Yeah. This is... The, <laughs> the, the calm, cool collectedness of... William Bibiani right now mm -hmm. versus the fiery Bolivian over he here. Hasn't gotten, can, can he I hasn't just, gotten heated. Can I just yeah. say something yeah. about the free for all? Because this is, this is something that's been bothering me sure. the idea that I'm some sort of paper mache champion or whatever yeah. the hell yeah, the, yeah. the expression mm -hmm. is. Um, the, the rules of the free for all is if you win, you get a title shot. If you are the MVP, you get a contender shot. I did that. And then I played my matches, and then I got the belt. If mm -hmm. you're saying that I'm that I'm illegitimate, then the free for all is meaningless, and I disagree with that. I'm gonna disagree. With, I'm gonna disagree with that as well. And here's the other thing. Oh, I never said it was meaningless. What, you, well, but you're, you're saying I'm not a legitimate. I'm saying, saying I fell in a title shot. Legitimate We're champion. We're not allowed to use our phones in the room. It's okay. Yeah. So go ahead, John. John. What were you saying? Sorry, my family members are wishing me, you. My family members wishing me happy birthday. That's fine. Happy sorry birthday. About that. That's fine. I'm sorry. That's happy birthday. Thank you. I'm sorry. So the sorry, so, Roxy. So you, but you say you you okay. you're, you're going back on it. You're saying he is a legit champion. That's not oh, he's a legit champion. champion. Yeah. He won the belt. Yeah. Just like uh, people have been and bashing he beat Snyder. People hit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. Snyder showed his belly. Snyder. He, he Snyder showed his belly. But he beat him and choked and gave up. He gave yeah. up. So you would have taken gonna, it easy. I don't on him? give him credit for that. No, no. He you gave up. But it's he not a legitimate victory. He gave up. The Andreco one. The Andreco one. I give you absolutely. That's you beat. You own Andreco. There's no lie there. You've beaten him twice, and you brought it up in movie fights like a jerk. And so those kinds of stuff are the. See, that's the thing I want to make clear to the fans. He's not this cute bubble guy you see that he puts on an act for everybody. He's kind of mean and dirty and he says uh, 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 mean things
things to people off camera, little sarcastic jabs, things like that nature. So you don't, that bothers me. Real that question, bothers me. Real though. question, Roka. You don't? Yeah, I do it playfully. He means it. Okay, what? so I don't know you about do that. say mean things I'm gonna, off I'm gonna, air, I'm gonna push but back you're joking. Well, you can't say, you're, you're defending your, your boy. That's, uh, ben I'll, and I have had a back defending, and forth. You know, I'm not defending I'm gonna, anybody. I'll push, I was asking. I'll push back on that, too. I think, <laughs> That's fair. I think, he, I think he plays the game the same way that you do it. I think he does. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back that and I'll defend the champion on that one, too, guys. I think that he plays he plays into it. I think that he, I do, but there's a time to turn it off and a time to turn it on. Yeah, but I mean, I think sometimes too. Like Ben and I, had, Ben and I have had our shit, and we always talk I know. afterwards. I've been Andrew and I, Andrew ahead, and I have had our ahead. shit, and we always talk. I've afterwards. been encouraged, and frankly, by by this by this man here yes. to take the schmo down seriously on and off camera, and actually like try to try to own the belt. I've sent texts yeah. to you mm -hmm. where I was actually oh, like, I, know about I was very texts. humble about the belt, and I was just like, look, I'm just I'm just another guy who won the belt, and I'm very honored to. And do, I said, wear it with a badge. You, like a badge. And you told me to take it more seriously. I am have to be constantly reminded to wear this thing. Because I find it immodest. Yeah. Okay. So I, that's, if I'm a jerk, I'm sorry if I'm a jerk off camera. I want to be a jerk on camera. Yeah. And I, I want to, and I, listen, I'm gonna, yeah. a rival. I, I don't mind a jerk I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, again, I, I will come to his defense on this one because I, 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 I think that's inaccurate. I think that he's, uh, I think he's been, uh, I think he's been pretty good as far as in the character. And I think when he's in that arena, it's game on. So it's like, you know. Oh, he's fantastic. No, no, arena. I can't No, I'm that. saying even behind the cameras. I think even mm -hmm. if, even if you, because people, remember, this mm -hmm. is something, this is why when I go back to Roxy, while you were playing heel, my friend, you were the one that people would say, mm -hmm. they, just, they would scream at you from the desk to shut up because you'd be calling out every single answer. Come mm -hmm. on, what up? Come on. You're right. I see no difference. Also, I'm um, going to defend Andrew You know what? That's Guy a fair say, point. That's yeah. a fair point. Actually, yeah. I, you're right. I did do that. I was a bit intense at times in the in the past. Yeah. And I do get intense. And that's I love the game that much. I do get And so for that, I do feel bad about later. And I apologize. And I do yeah. think about my own thing sometimes when I do that. So I hear you. Sure. Absolutely, I did that at the beginning. Right, but and he's still I, in the beginning I carried of his the career. heel mantle sure. for a long time. Did. I didn't wilt from it, right. like other people have who asked to be heels and couldn't handle it. I took it for a year. Right. All the crap, all the comments, all the negative shots, all the things that question, like uh, uh, you know, all the shots I took from the fans. Right. I did it all and carried it because the league, this league, was was and the group thing. Well, I think that people like yourself, people like Bibiani, Makuga, Riley, Roxy, people are growing this Absolutely. league every Absolutely. single day. And I think that we have a champion that is terrifying. I think we have a champion yeah. that knows his stuff, and I am. Oh, I thought you were talking about Rachel and Clark. They okay. are too, but I'm not I'm talking okay. about you because I think right. that this match. But I'm yeah, because this match is going to be intense. We've already seen this so far, but I, here's here's the one thing that I will do because we got ten minutes. And I want to talk, get your thoughts on movies as well before we leave here. Oh. <laughs> I like movies. Bibs, yes. You, you got you got. To tell me, tell Roka here with nobody talking back. What is going to happen on Friday in this title match? Roka, mm -hmm. how are you doing? I'm great. Awesome. Well, <laughs> you might not be so great on Friday. Mm -hmm. Because Friday, it's going to be you. It's going to be me. Mm -hmm. We're going to have a lot of our bad blood. And we're going we're gonna to duke it out in the ring like ring people would do. You know those ring people? Yeah, those ring people. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know my sports. Um, and it's going to come down to you. It's going to come down to me. It's going to come down to questions. And in the end, the person who answers the most right questions, depending on the point value. Right. Will win. Okay. And um, prediction. Okay. Here's what I'm gonna say. It's gonna be close. Okay. I think we're I th we think we're more similar than you realize. And I think that if you win, I'll be a little surprised. But good for you. And if I lose, I'm as good as John Roca. He's never defended a belt. All right. And then how? Yeah. Which which he reminded me of. Remember when I lost it? He, he was did. really mean about it. All right. Well, let's. So he's so not the sweet, sweet cuddly teddy well, bear people go, think. Now let's oh, go. Oh, two yeah. there are. Now let's. <laughs> you have your chance. Be as nice as possible. Yeah. Here you go. Sure. Here's what I'll say. <laughs> Bibiani, you have disrespected the game. You have insulted the game, and then when you understood the mistakes you were making, you became a humble champion. And I respected you. But as soon as you got that belt again and you saw Andrew and I call you out on it from the desk, you started shooting your mouth off thinking you were above the game again. My goal is to take that belt from you because this league deserves a real champion. And I'm a real champion. And I've never been more focused to go and get this belt, even when I face Dan. All right, we've got a new study plan 
my lady outlaw and I have come up with a new study plan to come get you because you are an intelligent man about movies. You are a formidable champion and it will be incredibly difficult to beat you. But if I do it, I will A, push back on that narrative that you said to me, I'm not a real champion because I didn't defend it. And I will be a two-time champion, singles champion, and that matters. And I'll be back on that Mount Rushmore. And after that, I'm going to go after everybody else. I'm going to challenge whoever's going to win that uh, the tournament you're going to yep. have going on. Yep. And then I'm going to go and try to get Sam out of retirement. I want to be a champion that this league is proud of, and I want to be a champion for a long time. I've never trained harder for anybody else like I've trained for you because I know you are going to be the toughest competition I've had in a very long time since Dan Merle. And John, that's no lie. John you, Roca John. And, and William Bibiani, the champion, going at it this Friday. John has a big match coming up today at mm -hmm. 1 with Dan Merle against Corruption. But on Friday for the championship on Collider, 1 p.m. PST, you can watch the title match go down between Roca and Bibiani. You got something, Makus? Yeah, just uh, you guys can buy Wildberries t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> are there are there multiple Wildberries t-shirts? Oh, can we have plenty. Get, oh, so my God. Many. I should be and rolling. Can I get a Wildberries t-shirt? Yeah, and yeah, after I win cool, on Friday, and I'm going to win oh. on Friday, uh, you can see me at Los Globos uh, with Josh oh, McCougan, yeah. and, Ken Knapsack, and, and, and Mark Ellis, yeah. and T. And uh, can oh, are you on yeah. the show now? Yeah, I, now yeah, apparently yeah. I have well, five because, attendants. Because yeah. uh, Sheridan's out because he's going to be out of town. He yeah. didn't defend the title for the show. I don't know if it counts that he's on the oh. show. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward. Listen, I will say this. I will yeah. say this. Yeah. If John beats Fair me, enough. Yeah. if John beats me, and he might, it's going to be a tough game. Uh, I look forward be. to this new era that he wants to usher in of the Schmodown in which nobody smack talks. I think I'm really looking forward to that <laughs> because that's his definition of disrespect in the yeah, game. I don't know. It's no smack watch talk. The ratings, so no more watch smack the ratings go in the tank. I think, stop yeah. bits and stop complaining. I think if I, put that, if I put that moniker down there of telling, pe of pe of telling people you yeah. cannot smack talk anymore, I just, no, I all never... I know is it delegitimizes me as a champion. Yeah. So, Christian, uh, yes. you said you wanted to hear them out before you made your decision yeah. on who you thought would take oh, it. Yeah. What are you thinking? It depends on the wheel at this point. It depends on the wheel. What a wimp out um, answer. Oh, my God. I, he I made gotta, all look, of us answer. Here, here's, here's the thing. Here's my Just flip a coin. Here, here's why. Because I'm agreeing with Makuga the two. I believe that you've studied. I do believe that you've yeah. studied very much so for him. I think that your emotions get the better of you sometimes. Yeah. I've seen it it's happen. No I've seen it happen before. The mere mention of his name and you going into past got you fired up. Mm -hmm. If he does that once to you... I see him winning the match. If you stay calm, cool, and collected, I see it be a tough fight. He knows things about movies that I don't think the filmmakers themselves know. Yeah. So, um, Roxy, I am going to wuss out. It could go either way. Wow. It could go either way. So, um, all I can tell is you've mm -hmm. seen you've seen my focus lately. You've seen before matches. I am dialed in. I agree. And calm. And if it was thing if behind it was, the, the stage. I agree. The, if it was against anyone else, I would say, yeah, you're locked in. Mm -hmm. 22 rounds in, in the free-for-all is yeah. not to be scoffed at. That is standing. Absolutely not. He destroyed Snyder, whether Snyder gave up or not. He, sure. he gave up because he was getting destroyed. Yeah. Um, and then he beat Andrejko again. Yeah. So, and that's hard. Andrejko only lost once this season mm -hmm. to him. I so, think you're putting my performance at the free-for-all lately. Because combined, the wild, the combined the wild bears went six <laughs> rounds. It's right. a big freaking and deal. And he was drunk. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. He was drunk. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So I don't even know if we have time to talk about movies, to be honest, because uh, that was, uh, I don't know if I don't want to anymore, because that, oh. was, that was it at this point. You'll come back. So we had, really? yeah, it was Neat. the, it is the, yeah, it's the end of the show. What it's a the show. End. The show's done. What a show. What? Oh, what a show. Thank you to Mark Ellis. Yeah. Thank I you so to, many thoughts on Mary Poppins. Thank you to the great Matt Sarah oh, for calling fantastic. in, talking. That was really cool. Mm -hmm. And thank you to the number one contender, the outlaw John Roca in the movie Trivia Showdown and the current reigning movie trivia showdown champion of the world William the Beast Bibiani congratulations guys I am excited for it I can't wait to watch it the fans are going to be in for a doozy I'm sure it is the championship it is five rounds make sure you check it out this Friday tweet at the guys who's going to win we should put a poll up too if Dorian's listening put a poll up who's going to win Roca or Bibiani vote on it because I'm curious where the fans lie right now whoever wins the audience wins it's true Roxy should he make an option it depends on the wheel <laughs> <laughs> well said. Roxy Stryer, Josh Rakuga, Mark Riley, Mark Ellis, John Roca, yeah. William Bibiani. Thank you guys so Thank much. You. We will catch you tomorrow. Again, remember two great guests, John Noble in tomorrow, Ooh. and the former boxing champion, heavyweight champion of the world, Vladimir Klitschko, tomorrow. Wow. Check us out, Clyde a lot. Cool.